all cylinders. RMU gained 535 offensive yards while holding Lynchburg to just 57 yards. The Dragons were held to six yards rushing as Robert Morse ran away with a 46 to nothing victory. And quarterback Anthony Chickett threw four touchdown passes to four different receivers. Noah Robinson, Landon Lucas, Kimano Sullivan, and Chase Jackson. Andre Cooper scored on a 69-yard bomb, a reception from backup QBs in Tavia Smith, who had a five-yard touchdown run, and Cooper forced a fumble to keep Lynchburg off the board. But Howard's going to be a much tougher opponent today. They have a three-prong running attack with Wheeler, Hunter and Hawthorne. And Quentin Williams is thrown for seven touchdowns with only one interception. Despite their one and two record, this is a solid football team and it's going to be a good test for Robert Morris. Okay. As long as you can, as long as you can hear us. Getting all warmed up on a warm Saturday afternoon. The fall colors starting to appear in the trees in the background here at Joe Walton Stadium. And what a story Chicken has been. Did not have the starting assignment when the season began at the United States Air Force Academy, but has won the job uh, since that time. Of course, uh, in that game, Tyler Zolkowski was injured and hasn't been seen since. Meanwhile, Quinton Williams, number one on the other sideline, that's the guy we're going to take a real close look at. And I know Bernard Clark Jr., the head football coach here at Robert Morris, right there, on your screen right now is concerned with how good that guy is. Yeah, Quentin Williams has gotten off to a, just a fantastic start. As he's uh, been a touchdown machine and um, very few mistakes. And Howard, even though they have a one and two record, Chris, I, I think they're going to be a really, really tough, tough game for the Colonials here today. Check it, and I don't want to jinx him, Jim, has not thrown a pick in 96 <laughs> passes this year, and I probably yeah, did probably just jinx did. him. <laughs> I hope I did not. Meanwhile, it will be the Bison who will kick off. They have the ball lined up, teed up at the 35-yard line. And they're getting set to put it into play. Dylan West is their kicker. As you can see, O'Sullivan and one of his mates back deep to receive for Robert Morris. Here's the run-up and the kick. And this game is underway. The return from the five. This is Ridgely on the return. Trinell Ridgely, the wide receiver from Long Beach City College, brings it back out to around the 23-yard line, and the Colonials will have the offense on the field first, and Anthony Chickett gets to go right to work. Yeah, last game he went right to work for sure. On the first play of the game, he throws a beautiful bomb to Robinson for a big-time touchdown for the Colonials. Colonials wearing all blue here today after a red out win on homecoming last week. First down and 10 from the 23-yard line. Check it with one running back off to his right shoulder. He's going to shift the tight ends to the left side of the line. Howard stacked up on the line. Play fake. Check it throws out. And the catch made over on the far side by Noah Robinson for a short gain. They'll pick up just a couple. Let's take a look at the starting lineup for the Colonials. Out on the field here today, offensively. Line with Kepper, Thompson, Beltavsky, Tercios, and O'Hare has been stout. Bonsu getting the start at running back with the receivers, as you can see. Second down, six yards to go. Little motion coming from the right side, and they try to turn the corner. And again, the Colonials just pick up short yardage on the end around. That was Robert Dickerson who was set up on the sweep. Yeah, Robert Dickerson, a uh, local guy from uh, North Hills High School, gets the first handoff. Uh, I like what the Colonials are doing. There's a lot of misdirection this year. I definitely can see a difference uh, from this year to last year, and that's probably due to the new offensive coordinator, Josh Firm, who I think has really added a lot to the Colonial attack. This time Becker is going to go out wide to the right side. Noah Robinson is in the slot. They have a third receiver over there as well. Now, Chicken's going to empty the backfield. He'll send Kamano Sullivan over to the left side. Chicken bobbles the snap, and then picks it up and tries to run with it. He'll get up to about the 30 yard line, and that's all short of the line to gain by about four yards. And the Colonials are going to have to bring George Souders, the third, their punter, on to get them out of trouble here. Yeah, I thought there was a bigger hole there. I thought he was going to be able to get about 10 yards on that play, but uh, great job by Howard defense closing in on him and knocking him down before he could get to that first down marker. Souders 
standing at his own 14-yard line, ready to punt. The deep man is Jamar Ebron for Howard. Good snap. Good blocking, and Souders pounds it high and hard. Fair catch is called for, and Ebron will field it at the 32-yard line, and Howard will take over there after the Colonials go three and out. Yeah, look. We're going to take a timeout. Just underway here at Joe Walton Stadium. Chris Shublin, Jim Elias on the call on ESPN+. Plus. Alone, chicken, onions, peppers, and cheese have potential. Together, they have a purpose, a destiny, and a name. Because grilled to order makes a sub above. This is a story about strength. It wakes up early in the morning, stays up late, moves mountains, and travels the world. It makes adventure and hard work possible. Strength delivers food to tables, packages to doorsteps, products to stores, and kids to practice. It shows up everywhere you show up. Hercules tires are built for almost every driver and every vehicle. Find the right Hercules for your story and let our strength drive yours. I'm thirsty. Try this. Starry. It's a new lemon-lime soda that's crisp, clear, and... So refreshing. So tasty. What the... Just let it happen. Sure. He was a soda. New Starry Lemon Lime Soda. It's different. There's not a secret to what actually happens behind the scenes at a bank. Here at First Citizens, we're trying to educate the client in each step of what's actually going to happen and actually have them make the educated decision around what steps and what options they utilize. We want to become that trusted advisor that actually guides them down that road helping you reach your goals. That's Forever First. If our turkey had a resume, it would say it's 99% fat-free, filler-free, and raised without antibiotics. But our turkey already has its dream job at Jersey Mike's. Premium meat makes a sub above. Howard getting set to take possession of the football. There's the starting lineup. And uh, Jim, we found out right before kickoff that Casey Hawthorne is not going to be available today. They're going to go with Nashon Hezekiah at the wide receiver spot. That's a big loss for them because not only can he catch, he can run. Yeah, very big loss for him. Uh, he's, he actually has 14 receptions this year, 160 yards, for four touchdowns in three games. So he's, he's a uh, main weapon that's going to be out, and that will help the Colonials for sure. Quentin Williams getting the call from the sideline, doing a check with me early as they head out onto the field after the first time out. Just shy of the 34-yard line, first down and 10. Howard with the ball on offense. It's going to be a run play, a little staggered start, and that ball's going to go up the middle, but there's not much there. It's Jared Hunter on that run. He'll find two yards, and that's it. The Colonials close that down quickly. Yeah, right. Nice job by the Colonial defense. They're being very, very aggressive, uh, blitzing a lot, even on uh, rundowns. Hunter, the single running back, off to the left shoulder of Quentin Williams. Second down and eight for Howard. Quarterback draw. Can he get out of there? No, the Colonials are going to grab him as he darted forward that time. Quentin Williams saw that everybody was covered, and he tried to lunge forward, and the first man to hit him was Noah Steverson, the defensive lineman out of Ronner Park, California, and he buried him in the backfield. He sure did. Uh, he collapsed that line. They had a four-man rush, Chris, and they did not blitz that time. We were back in coverage, but excellent pressure by the front four of the Colonials that time. It's going to be a loss of five, and it'll bring up third down and 13 for Howard from their own 30-yard line. Colonials really, really have improved on defense this year. They really struggled last year, but so far this year have been very good. Empty backfield now. Williams looking over the middle, has time, throws, and that one is complete. Hunter, who was lined up in the slot over on the left side, went down and just turned around waiting for the ball to find him, and it did. And that's going to be a first down for Howard, a gain of 16 on the pass play. 
Yeah, nice job by Jared Hunter finding that soft spot in that colonial zone defense. And was wide open. Line of scrimmage is the 45. First down and 10 now for Howard. Three receivers right this time. Williams going to hand off. It's Hunter again getting the action, and Hunter is going to be taken down as soon as he gets that handoff. That's going to be a one-yard loss. This is a story. On the stop that time for Robert Morris was D. Pierce. Pierce, the safety. The transfer from Miami of Ohio making a hard play that time. The Chicago kid. Yeah, great job. closing speed that time shown by D. Pierce, and a really solid tackle also. They say that Hunter got back to the line. It's second down and 10 now. Again, a check with me to the sidelines. Quinton Williams out of Upper Marlboro, Maryland. 6'5", 205-pound graduate student. Gets the snap. Wraparound handoff. It's Hunter again coming right side this time. Over the 45, ahead to the 47-yard line. Brought down by a bunch of tacklers, including Tyler King, the linebacker out of Pine Richland High School here in western Pennsylvania. Yeah, local guy, makes a big play. Good aggressive defense again by Robert Morris on that second down play. And now Howard, Jim, is looking at third and eight. They bring Robert Morgan the fourth in as the running back this time. Motion right by Ebron. Pass over the middle is tipped up into the air and it'll be deflected and incomplete. Michelangelo Loretto, the defensive end out of Pasadena, California, got his hand up there and smacked that ball as if he were playing volleyball. Yeah, Loretto saved a big play, Chris, because he doesn't get this. That's going to be wide open for uh, Howard, but he blocked it before it could get to the receiver. There was a lot of space in front of him. Looked like Loretto was the second man who tipped yeah, that ball. Two twice. Colonials yeah, in it. it. Might have been tipped twice. You're wow. Right. It's fourth down and eight, and the punt unit is on for Howard. This is going to be a spiral downfield. Fair catch is called for and fielded right. at around the five-yard line. You don't and the do Colonials that. will take it from there, and you're absolutely right. To see Howard that time. Called for the fair catch. I don't know if he realized how deep he was downfield. Yeah, you know, you, you stand on the 10-yard line, and you know if you go backward to fill the punt, you should leave it go. And uh, that time he decided to catch it in the five-yard line. And uh, he's probably going to hear about it from the <laughs> special teams coordinator. Yeah, that's Bart Tansky. Special teams have done a pretty good job here at Robert Morris this season as well. This team has really grown under Bernard Clark Jr. and his coordinators. Yeah, it's a tough spot now the Colonials are in. Let's see what Chicken can do if he's going to pass or try to run it out of the, from the five-yard line here. Yeah, he's straddling the goal line in the pistol right now. This is sticky territory. Has time, throws, and that ball's deflected and knocked down. Great rush that time by Howard. Yeah, that was Derek Brown Jr. Beautiful block. It was right in Chicken's face. Second down and 10 from the five-yard line for Robert Morris. Remember, the Colonials went three and out in their first possession. Bonsu is the running back. He's in the end zone. Chicken again straddling the goal line. Gets the snap and a bobble, and he's going to throw out. And there's Noah Robinson on the slant. Over on the left side, and Robinson makes the grab and goes for the first down, and that will give the Colonials some breathing room. Yeah, who else would you go to in a clutch situation? Noah Robinson is coming up big time and time again this year. Chicken threw that ball right through the hands of Kenny Gallup Jr. He, he got away with one there, Jim. He sure did. Went right through his arms. Good reception. Good. I, I like the accuracy Chicken throws, uh, shows a lot. He's very, very accurate, especially on deep balls. Trips right, a little pop handoff forward this time for the Colonials, and they're going to run it over to the near side. And we're going to get a flag here as James Westry took that handoff, that forward pass, if you will, on the sweep and got decked near the bench. And that's going to be an unsportsmanlike call against the Bison. Yeah, that was Terrence Holland, the um, junior from Cleveland, Ohio. Hit him a little bit late. Yeah, 
I'm sure I'll hear about that <laughs> from his coach. It's tough to hold up some of these guys. They have that mentality. Hit anything that moves, they get close to that sideline, and uh, got to got to hold back. You got to pull back. Again, another situation where you have to realize where you are on the field, and, and in this case, off the field. Absolutely. First down and ten down for Robert Morris. Two right, one to the left in Westry, who comes in motion. Little play action, and the handoff this time will come to the left side, and the Colonials are going to find about three yards on the run play, and that's Kimano Sullivan carrying the football. Got a nice block that time by Aiden Stair, number 66. Colonial left guard pulled out. Solid hit and opened up that hole. Second down and eight now for Robert Morris. Becker, Westry, and Dickerson all go to the right side. Triangle trip set. Chickett has Robinson on the left. Chickett's looking right, and the catch is made coming off the line that time. Chase Jackson, the tight end. Just running laterally, the Colonials end up losing a yard on that pass play, though. Yeah, what a play by Casey Hinton. Carson Hinton, I should say. He beat the block from the tight end. Robert Moore's tight end was trying to nail him, but he ended up uh, avoiding the block and making the hit and was able to bring him down. Hinton, kid from Detroit, Michigan, senior, six feet tall. Robert Morris now, Jim, looking at third down and nine. Yeah, keep your eyes on Mr. number two for the Colonials. They go to him time and time again in big situations. Noah Robinson. He's at the bottom of your screen. Far side left. Here's Chicken bouncing back. Stepping up. He's going to run. Chicken for the first down and a gain of nine. Let's call it a 10-yard pickup that time as Anthony runs out to the 46-yard line. Yeah, real good decision by Anthony Chicken. Didn't have anybody open. Used those legs. Took off. I love it when quarterbacks run. I think it uh, really loosens up the defense, makes them play a little tighter and can help your receivers. There he is. He, sees, he knows exactly where that marker is, and uh, you know, sliding down for Anthony Chicken. The Colonials move the chains with six and a half minutes to go in the first period of play. There is no score. Two tight slots. One to each side. Handoff will go to O'Sullivan. No, they fake it to him, and they're going to throw the pass out to the left. And it's going to be a tight end catch made this time by the Colonials' Landon Lucas, who had a touchdown reception last week. Lucas out of Modesto, California, and a nice play fake again by Chicken. It was. That was set up beautifully. The two running backs crisscrossed and uh, fake and uh, beautiful completion. Look, a wild little swinging gate type of formation there. Chicken. Had the lineman sliding over to the left, and let's take a look at the catch earlier. Yeah, there's the crisscross misdirection, and there's Lucas. Then the Colonials go with a little bit of an awkward, or I, I should say a rare type of formation where the center was out in the middle of the field at the hash mark, and everybody else was on the sideline to the left. They thought they were going to Catch everybody sleeping, but Chicken overthrew the pass that time to the tight end. Now it's third down and two. Here's Robinson in motion. Give off. Bonsu digging hard, chugging hard. He'll have the first down on a grinding run. And Bonsu didn't want to get tackled on that play, wrapping him up and trying to throw him down was Darian Brokenberg. Nice run by Bonsu. He's a powerful little guy. He's not a huge guy, but he's definitely a straight-ahead power runner, and that's uh, he's made for those short first down distance. Colonials have a nice little drive going here, Chris. They're eating up a lot of time, a lot of, a lot of possession. Again, trips to the right side. Check it, fakes, rolls right, looks. Uh -oh. Throws downfield. Wow. And was that catch made or not? I don't Let's see. think so. No, they're going to say incomplete. And again, that's. That receiver did not bring that ball in that time. Difficult to see these Robert Morris <laughs> numbers. <laughs> Welcome to my world. <laughs> it really is tough. That, I, I believe it was Robinson over there. But I'm, I'm not sure because yeah. I'll tell you what, uh, 
Red numbers on blue shirts with gray outlines. Oh, man, they're tough. <laughs> <laughs> And the gray ones are interesting, too. Here's a screen pass over to the right. And the catch is made. And they're not going to find very much after all that running. Let's see. It's going to be third down and about seven for Robert Morris. The ball is sitting at the 39-yard line right between the hashes. We have four and a half minutes to go here in the first quarter of play. Still no score between Robert Morris and Howard University. Robert Morris won the first match a couple of seasons ago here on this same field. Yeah, this is one of those drives that a lot of plays and a lot of short yardage gain, but no big plays yet in this drive. See if Robert Morris is going to look to go downfield a little bit more. We're going to get a timeout before we find that out. 423 left, first period of play. When we come back, it'll be third down and seven for Robert Morris against Howard here on ESPN+. Plus. This is a... Broadcast is brought to you in part by Hercules Tires. Ride on our strength. Visit HerculesTires.com. Sunbelt Rentals. We have equipment for that. First Citizens Bank. Forever first. And Jersey Mike's. A sub above. Okay, it is third down and seven for Robert Morris. Colonials with the ball at the Howard 39-yard line. Anthony Chickett with O'Sullivan behind him. There's Becker in motion. O'Sullivan with a handoff. And only about a yard, maybe a yard and a half, and that's it. Howard was there to finish that play off quickly. Yeah, a little bit of an odd call that time. I thought that Chick would definitely be throwing on that down. He decided to hand it off, but it uh, looks like Clones are going to go for it here. On fourth down and six, Chicken sends it over the oh. middle. Robinson was there, but Chicken didn't make the connection, and the ball goes incomplete and over on downs. Closest man to Robinson that time was Jabari Knighton, who was in coverage. So the Colonials turn it over. Howard has the ball when we return with 3.54 left here in the first period of play at Joe Walton Stadium in Pittsburgh.
Quote of the game is presented by Ehrlich Pest Control. Defend your home against pests with Ehrlich Pest Control, your local pest control experts. Go to jcehrlich.com for more info, get a free quote, and stay pest-free. The quote of the game is Bernard Clark Jr. told us how much he loves the college football game and working with young guys. Jim, I know you were trying to compliment him, saying you belong in the NFL. He played for the Bengals and the Seahawks and then was signed to the practice squad with the Cowboys and, of course, was the MVP of the Orange Bowl when he played for the U, but uh, he loves this level. Yeah, he's, uh, he says, I like this. I like teaching young men, and he, he wants to make an impact on these guys' lives, and I, I think he does, too. He's a really, really good leader. Howard has the ball first down and 10 after the Colonials turned it over on downs, and the run play will go to Jarrett Hunter. Hunter started up the middle, then tried to turn it outside, and that was smart because he was able to pick up about three or four. Yeah, I think it's number 89, Nigel Simmons. I almost had him in the backfield, and he uh, just got away from him, but uh, he bust up that play pretty good. Second down, a little more than six. Ball sitting at the 42-yard line. The Colonial's going to change up the defense a bit. Yeah, they're coming in with a lot of defensive backs on this play. One, two, Expecting Quentin Williams to pass. And, and instead, they're going to go to Hunter on the run play, and he gets dragged down from behind by linebacker Tyler King. It wasn't fooling Tyler King. Tyler penetrated. Nice, solid tackle on the legs. Good stop by the Colonials. Third and six now. Colonials need to turn to get a turnover here soon. Sure they're looking for a big play. Help, maybe the defense can help out the offense, get in some good field position. Howard's best receiver, Casey Hawthorne, not in the game today. He was a scratch right at kickoff time. They've gone exclusively with Hunter so far in the run game. And now Williams is back to pass. He's going to be flushed. Rolls over to the left. Here comes King again. He nice trips tackle. him up and drops him after a two-yard run. Yeah, really nice open field tackle by... Tyler King that time. There's a penalty flag on the floor. Somebody, I saw one of the Colonials go down, got pushed down to the ground, and I think referees caught it. This is after the play was over. Mm -hmm. This could be a big one. Uh, this could send back uh, the Bison back to uh, 15 yards here. Nope, take it back. It's on the Colonials. Wow. He was the guy, Tyler King. That you yep. saw get up off the ground. I don't know if it was a... Taunting. Taunting. A little too much celebration. And that's going to give Howard the ball back. Not a good play. Mental mistake by Tyler King now. It's going to cost the Colonials and then continue this drive for the Howard Bison. Now they're over the 50-yard uh, line in good field position. Line of scrimmage is the 41. The nose of the football touching the chalk stripe. Well, those, side hash mark. those are the kind of mistakes that just drive coaches crazy. You get them stopped, and then you have to start all over again. But a nice tackle right there, Chris. Fake handoff that time, and Tony Brown just lit up. The quarterback, Quentin Williams. Brown with an excellent tackle there. Deep in the backfield, a three-yard loss. Yeah, nice play by Tony Brown, the transfer from the Naval Academy. Beautiful tackle. They went wildcat on that play, Howard did. And they had Braylon Smith in there taking the snap. Now Williams is back, and he's going to throw a swing pass out to the right side. That ball is complete, and that's Ian Wheeler coming out of the backfield. He'll move it back up to the 41-yard line, but it's going to be third down and 10 for the Bison. Nice tackle by uh, Joe, linebacker Joe Cassell. Sale's been one of the top tacklers on the Robert Morris defense so far this year, Jim. He's played lights out. Yeah, Colonel's uh, doing a night better job of tackling this year. You can tell that's something they stressed in the uh, summertime and the preseason workouts and the uh, practices now. Inside of the last minute of the first quarter, Williams back to pass, floats one out to the right side, and that's going to be complete for the first down. A big play for the Bison, and that's Jamar Ebron, the wide receiver out of Washington, D.C., making the catch and moving the sticks. Yeah, Williams shows you that gun he has. 
He's a very dangerous quarterback. You got to keep him bottled up. Now they're in the hurry up. Screen pass right side. Another catch made by Ebron. And this time Ebron is brought down. And he'll be brought down after about a yard gain at the most as we're down to 16 seconds left here in the first quarter. That was Tyler King again on the tackle. He's made about three tackles on this drive here. Clock is just going to wind down, and that will be the end of the first period of play. We have played and have seen a scoreless ball game so far. It is Robert Morris nothing and Howard nothing. College football this afternoon. Here on ESPN Plus from Joe Walton Stadium in Pittsburgh. Second meeting between these two ball clubs. Robert Morris won the first time around back in 2021 here on this field, 22 to 16. George Martin was quarterbacking the Colonials at that time, threw for two touchdown passes. And right now Howard is on the march and the pass from Williams goes out to the left side and making a jump catch right along the sideline is Nashon Hezekiah who is playing for Casey Hawthorne, who's not available today. Yeah, and again, you see that accuracy replay. You can see the accuracy of Williams. He's a good-looking passer. Colonial's able to close it down right at the catch, but it's third down and three. Howard on the move right now. Ball just outside of the 20-yard line. There's your wildcat again. He tried it again with uh, Eden Williams. Eden yeah. James, I should say. Yeah, it didn't work that time, Jim, did it? Nope. Colonial snuffed that one out. Looks like the senior Kenny Gallup 
made the tackle. Or you, yeah, zero. And that would have been Garrett Fairman for Robert Morris. Okay. And there he is, Fairman, another local kid out of TJ, Thomas Jefferson. It's going to be fourth down and six now for Howard. Let's see what Quentin Williams has in his bag of tricks. Okay, watch him taking off too, Chris. If he doesn't find a receiver, he will run. Oh. He will fire it over the middle, and that slant pass is complete. Colonials are trying to ball hawk, but nothing doing there. Not letting go of the football is Richie Ar Araza that time, and he was able to hold on, tuck it in, and now Howard is on the doorstep here. First down and goal to go from just about 10 yards away. Now, this is what happens when you give uh, a team, offensive team, a first down with a uh, silly penalty, keep that drive alive. And uh, Howard is definitely taking advantage of it. They've moved the ball straight down the floor, filled on the Colonials. Here's Hunter. He's going to spin, and he'll get inside the 10, and that's about it. The Colonials close that one off quickly. Whole bunch of tacklers in there, including Britton Pasco, number 10 that time. The Pierce was part of that. Pasco making initial contact. Gain of one, second down and goal from the nine. Yeah, don't be surprised if you don't see Quentin Williams take off on one of these passes. We'll drop back and just take off. There he is, trying to hold on after the play fake to Hunter, and he'll slide forward for another yard, maybe a yard and a half. And again, the Colonials thought about the same as you did, Jim. Yeah, I'm, I'm uh, thinking he's that, that was a design play, though. It's third down. I'm thinking he's going to go back, drop back for a pass, and then just take off up the middle and use his legs to try to get in the end zone. This is where it could happen right here. Colonials are going to have to be very aware of this, put some pressure on him. Third and goal from about eight yards away. Defensive backs need to get up a little tighter when you get down to this end of the field. Williams, roll out. Looking to throw. Throws one over his shoulder, and that's complete for a touchdown. Beautiful. What a pass. Right into the hands of Nashon Hezekiah, who scores from eight yards away. And... The Bison get on the board first here at Joe Walton Stadium this afternoon. They lead Robert Morris with 11.35 to go in the first half by a score of 6 to nothing with a point after coming up. And Hezekiah is the guy that replaced Casey Hawthorne. So Absolutely. <laughs> got one good receiver replacing another. Dylan West on to kick the extra point. It is on its way. It's tall. It is good. And it's a 7-0 lead for the Howard Bison over Robert Morris with 11.35 left in the first half of play.
look at that touchdown again. Williams is rolling right. And how about throwing that ball, yeah. zipping it across his own body right into the hands of Nation has Yeah, that, that is not an easy throw. You're running to his right and throw back over the middle. It's a really dangerous play, but uh, great catch that time by Hezekiah. Dylan West set to tee it up. Colonial dropping back. Yeah. Steve, and that's Richley and O'Sullivan. Yeah, these long drives by the Colonials, they're getting some yardage, Chris, but they just can't uh, get over the hump on the big third down plays. When they cross over the 50-yard line, they're struggling a little bit, so they got to get going here. They, they need a good drive here. And this drive by Howard really was fueled by a Robert Morris penalty. Yeah, silly. Uh, I think it was a taunting play. A guy makes a great play and uh, gets up and he taunts a little bit and ends up costing the Colonials seven points. Ball is returnable, and here come the Colonials with it. Big hole. Ridgely, 30, 40. Tries to make a little stop and go move, and he ends up getting wrapped up and thrown out by Judah McJimsey. But a good return by Trinell Ridgely of Robert Morris. Let's yeah. take another look at the run from the reverse angle. Yeah, he catches this little gap here and his burst right through there. Showing you that speed he has. Nice return. Gets the Colonials finally to get the start of driving. Good field position on the 45-yard line. Empty backfield for Chicken now. Move a protector back in there. They're going to throw a bubble screen. Noah Robinson makes the catch. Behind the line of scrimmage, and there's nowhere for him to go. He gets tripped up at the legs that time by Lance McMillan, the defensive back. Yeah, that was one-on-one, -on -one, Robinson against McMillan, and McMillan won that one as they were counting on uh, Noah Robinson to break that tackle, but he couldn't do it. Great tackle by Lance McMillan. Second down and 10. No gain for the Colonials. I think the Bison uh, defensive backs have done a really nice job bottling up clothing receivers, not only deflecting passes, but also tackling well. Chicken, play fake. Passes left, and that one is complete. It goes to Chase Jackson, the tight end, and Jackson is able to spin his way for a two-yard gain, and that's all. And again, the Bison are all over that play as... We saw Emerson Martin the third come up and help out on that tackle. Yeah, really nice the one on one tackling. It's not easy to do when you're trying to tackle some of these talented uh, receivers, and tight ends. They can make you miss, but the great tackling. Both teams actually today, very, very short tackling. Trips right, single man to the left side for Robert Morris now. And again, Chicken will empty out the backfield. He's got a tight end in the slot to the right side. Sends Ridgely in motion. Chicken. Winding up, throwing downfield, looking for Ridgely, and that ball is going to be incomplete. Ridgely ran into double coverage that time, and it was excellent by Kenny Gallup Jr. and also Lance McMillan, who went step for step with him. Yeah, excellent. Uh, really well designed play, and but I was watching, uh, and uh, both defensive backs did not bite. They stayed with in their back in the uh, backfield and were able to cover that beautifully. George Souders the third is in to punt for Robert Morris. Line of scrimmage, the 47, and he will kick from the 33-yard line. Gets a good snap. And spirals one tall downfield, angles Beautiful. it at the five. Beautiful. It's going to take a tumble and bounce out and around the three-yard line. Call it the two, they say. And what a punt by George Souders. Oh, he does it again. That was gorgeous. That's exactly where he wanted to put it. Beautiful. What did we used to call it back in the day? The coffin corner. Coffin corner, corner. absolutely. <laughs> he buried it. 7 nothing. Howard on top. This is a story about strength. It wakes up early in the morning, stays up late, moves mountains, and travels the world. It makes adventure and hard work possible. Strength delivers food to tables, packages to doorsteps, products to stores, and kids to practice. It shows up everywhere you show up. Hercules tires are built for almost every driver and every vehicle. Find the right Hercules for your story and let our strength drive yours.
takes work, determination, and an unstoppable drive to reach your goal. That's what you just did, Pittsburgh. You fought to bring D1 hockey back to this city. Words can't express our gratitude, but our actions will. Every practice, every period, every game, we're going to leave everything on the ice for you. You kept us going, Pittsburgh. And thanks to you, we are unstoppable. You're more than a dreamer. You're a doer. Determined, driven, inspired. You may not see it now, but at Robert Morris University, we do. Our highly individualized approach will give you the confidence to try, the freedom to fail, and the support to try again. You'll be transformed. You'll be empowered. And you will be unstoppable. Robert Morris University. Unstoppable. Earlier in the game, we saw Robert Morris deep in its own territory, and now Howard will get the same treatment here by the Colonials, and uh, from the same end zone, they are pinned back, so let's see what Quinton Williams could do. They're going to try to power it straight ahead to get some breathing room, and they're able to move it up to the five-yard line in doing so. Yeah, obviously, Colonials are expecting run. They really stacked the box with nine players, and we're able to uh, shut that down for, a, what, a two-yard gain. Second down and eight from the five. Williams eyeing up the situation, now trying to get his wide receiver to scoot in a little bit. A motion by Gavin Harris, the tight end. They try to run it oh, right, safety. and a tackle down near the one-yard line. They're going to spot progress to the running back to the two. That's where they say the initial contact was made and they was pushed backwards. Let's take another look at it here. Great tackle here. Ooh, that was pretty close. Wow, great hit that time. That was Joe Casale, the linebacker, who got around the legs of Eaton James, the running back that time, and yanked him down. Yeah, it really. is third and ten. Great tackle by Cassell. He anticipated that beautifully. Here's the pass. Williams winding up, throwing long, and way too long and incomplete intended for Nashon Hezekiah. And that ball is going to bounce out of bounds, and Howard will have to punt from deep in its end. The Colonials should end up with excellent field position here if it works out their way. Yeah, some good coverage by uh, Britton Pasco, Chris. Really nice job. The transfer from North Dakota State was step for step. You talk about a good program. North Dakota State has been the king of FCS football through the years. Yeah, I'm sure uh, Bernard Clark wouldn't have, like to have more transfers from <laughs> North Dakota State. All right, the punter. Nine yards deep in the end zone. Skyrockets one. Tassin Howard runs under it and circles back and makes the fair catch at the 46. Robert Morris will have less than half the field to work with. When we return, 8.18 to go, second period of play. It's Howard 7, Robert Morris nothing here on ESPN+. Plus.
Myers is the official tire of the Big South Conference and for over 65 years has been providing tires with unbeatable quality at an unmatched value as the Colonials run the football. Whatever the vehicle and whatever the terrain, Hercules Tires invites you to ride on our strength. For a retailer near you, visit HerculesTires.com. It would be nice if the Colonials could get that running game going a little bit here instead of just relying on moving the ball by throwing. Got to have a two-dimensional attack. You can't just rely on one side of the ball. Dante Thompson lost his helmet. He's going to have to come out for one play. The Colonials looking at second down and nine. Ball sitting at the Howard 44-yard line. Check it. Play fake. Throws downfield. And that ball is going to be knocked away incomplete. Tried to find Noah Robinson. And again, double coverage. Robinson... Tried to reach back and grab that one and could not pull it in. Yeah, really nice job by safety Carson Hitton coming over and helping. He almost picked that ball off after the uh, collision on the sideline there. Robinson, the number two receiver in all the FCS, Jim, and he's got a target on his back, so they're going to double cover him every time Absolutely. he goes downfield. Yeah, Hinton, you can see Hinton shading that way. He kind of had a feeling that the ball was going that way. Three men. To the right side this time for Robert Morris on third and nine. Check it. Looking over the middle. Throwing downfield to the tight end. And that ball is hooked out of the air with a beautiful catch by Chase Jackson. First down, Robert Morris. That was a nice pass. Nice reception. Combat catch. Beautiful. Colonial's moving the ball now. And they're in the hurry up. First down and ten from just outside the 26. Chicken trying to catch Howard off balance. They're going to run it up the middle. This is O'Sullivan this time. He'll slide over to the left. Off tackle, he'll run. He'll pick up about four. And he is knocked down after that gain. He's got an injury on the floor, on the uh, field. Clayton Perrin making the stop. He was able to walk away from it. But, yeah, you're right. Somebody got tangled up in the interior. And it's one of the Howard Bison. Shaken up on the play. Inside of seven minutes to go here in the second quarter. It is Howard 7, Robert Morris nothing. If you're just joining us on ESPN Plus, Nashon Hezekiah caught an eight-yard pass from Quinton Williams on a long drive by Howard that was fueled by a Robert Morris penalty. The Colonials were getting set to put them into punt formation. As we take a look at Bernard Clark, Jr., the head coach of the Colonials, talking with Noah Robinson. But the Colonials uh, commit that penalty on that drive by Howard. And unfortunately, that fueled their drive. And there's another look at Chase Jackson making that grab in coverage that time. There were three bison around him. Yeah, that's, that's what you call a combat catch. And, uh, he went up and got it. Good pass. Colonials moving the ball a little bit now, getting some runs, mixing it up. You can do a lot more things uh, offensively when you have decent field position. And uh, Josh Firm's taking advantage of it. He's opening up the Colonial playbook as you've seen some uh, really neat stuff. Larry Scott, the head coach of the Howard Bison, one and two so far this year. As we look at Romo, the mascot, he has a nice spot on the field. <laughs> huh? Talk about privileges. Yeah. I think he could play some tight end, don't you? <laughs> He's a big dude. You think he can turn around and make that catch? <laughs> he could catch it right in his mouth. <laughs> There's the injury right there. I bet Anthony could drop it in there, too. That's Reggie Reed Jr. going off the field, Chris. 6'4", 250-pound defensive lineman. Yeah, not putting a lot of weight on those legs right now. Not sure what happened to him. Hopefully he's going to be okay. Second down and six after the pickup of four. Here comes Chicken again with the Colonial offense. He's going to move the tight end over to the right side. That is Landon Lucas. A little crossbuck action. O'Sullivan will get a handoff coming out of the backfield, cutting to the left, and he'll pick up yardage down to the 20. Robert Morris looking at third down and four. Chicken trips right, shifts the line. Ridgely in motion. Chicken rolling right. Zip pass coming out of the backfield, making the catch. 
and the Colonials able to advance that ball as O'Sullivan makes the grab coming out of the backfield. That's going to be another first down, a gain of six for Robert Morris. Yeah, they're really uh, throwing the playbook right now at the Howard Bison. Bernard Clark Jr. knows that they have to score here soon. Clayton Perrin making the stop on O'Sullivan after the run following the catch. Now the Colonials are going to bring Andre Cooper the second in. He'll be the wide out to the left side, although tight to the formation. Robinson is to the right. Play fake. Check it. Looking for Robinson. Can't find him. Now he steps up. Throws. The ball is caught at the goal line. And tumbling in for the touchdown is Chase Jackson, the tight end. Oh, great play. Chase Jackson taking it in. How about that decision by Chicken? Looked like he was going to run. It's the last second he spotted Jackson open in the goal, at, right at the goal line, and he nailed him right in the chest with the pass. Nice touchdown for Robert Morris. There, Chicken looks like he's going to take off here. I thought he was going to run, try to beat this guy one on one. Stop, throws, touchdown. Yeah, nice, Colonials. nice job by Josh Firm, Chris, the offensive coordinator. I thought he ran a lot of really neat plays that time on that drive. They did go deep into the playbook that mm -hmm. time. As Jason Jenkins comes on to tie the ball game, and he does with a successful PAT. It is a 7-7 ball game. Robert Morris and Howard tied up with 546 left here in the first half of play, and a good one on a sunny day in Pittsburgh. Chase Jackson scoring that touchdown for Robert Morris and Anthony Chickett. He thought he was going to run. He decided to shoot one just before he stepped up to the line of scrimmage. And that bullet was received by Jackson sliding over the goal line. Yeah, Chase Jackson had a couple big catches for the Colonials on that drive. As, uh, he showed some good chemistry with Anthony Chickett. Been targeted four times, has four receptions for 33 yards and a TD. Chicken, by the way, is playing well again. 11 of 17, 70 yards, and a TD pass. He really is, Chris. I, I really like the way he plays. He's smart. Doesn't seem to make the big mistake. He knows when to eat it. He knows when to take off. Makes good decisions. Michael Velasco is the long kickoff man for Robert Morris. Got a little bit under this one. Fielded at the 12. Uh -oh. And a big return. And it looks like it's going to go all the way. Oh. Let's see. Can he be caught? Mm -hmm. No, he will not be caught. That is going to be a touchdown for Ian Wheeler on the return that time. 
That was 88 yards on the kickoff return by Ian Wheeler. Wow. You could just see that one open up. Colonials didn't even get a hand on uh, Wheeler. Can't even say. I don't think it was a missed tackle. He just, it was a big hole there, and he just went right through it. There's the replay. Yeah, Jim, a short kick, and Wheeler yep. running up on it. Fielded it at the 12. There's the hole right up the middle here, Chris. Look Ooh. at that. Nobody got a hand on him. Maybe right there they had a chance, and then Wheeler just shows you that speed. Nobody's catching him. Yeah, Rob Carter did touch him, and that's, <laughs> that's about it. it. Wow. Fortunately, this is tackle football, not tab, so... <laughs> Special teams play. Personal foul and a special teams play have cost the Colonials big time here. Two touchdowns. Dylan West is on to kick the extra point for the Howard Bison. Placement is down. Kick is on its way. Successful. And Howard jumps back into the lead that quickly. 14-7. They lead Robert Morris, and what a dynamic return that was. Ian Wheeler, unofficially 88 yards on that return with 5.35 to go here in the second period of play, and that puts Howard up 14-7. to seven. Yeah, there was some nice blocking that time by the Bison on special teams. Special teams can make a big, big effect on this game. Bernard Clark cannot be happy. No, he's not happy at all. And if I'm the special teams coach, Bart Tansky, I'm staying away from Bernard Clark Jr. right now. <laughs> Although he's not the guy who missed the tackle. No, he's not. <laughs> 535 left. First half to play. 14 to 7 the score. Howard in the lead again that quickly. After the Colonials had tied it up just seconds earlier at the 546 mark. Yeah, Colonial off is going to have to go right back to work here. Try to get that score back before the half. There's five minutes, 35 seconds, plenty of time. Here's West. And he'll kick short this time. Let's see if the Colonials can get a good run back. And it looks like they will, except this time they're wow. going to be brought down. And around the 35-yard line. Wow, Carson hit and saved the touchdown there, Chris. If he doesn't make that tackle for the Bison. And Trinell Ridgely had a nice head of steam coming up that near side. So it's on the offense now. From the 34-yard line, first down and 10 yards to go. Bonsu will come in to play running back. Chicken will have a tight slot to the right. Noah Robinson is the wide out. Becker is in the slot. Chicken will talk to the lineman. Puts Bonsu on his right shoulder, hands off to him, and Bonsu will take it up the middle for about a two-yard gain and gets gang tackled on the play. At the bottom of the pile that time was Christian White, the linebacker out of Highland Springs, Virginia, for Howard. Yeah, Clemens just can't seem to get that running game going. They've had a couple runs, maybe three, four, five yards, but that's about it. Nothing... Uh... Nothing out in the secondary. This time, Robinson and Becker both go to the left. Westry is the wide out to the right side. Otherwise, a tight set. Westry comes in motion, runs into the backfield. Here's a give. It's going to be Bonsu. This time, he'll zig and zag over the 40 and ahead to the 42-yard line. Pick up another three yards. That seems to be the clone as far as they can get is three yards on a carry. Just having a difficult time. It's tough. Bison defense doing a great job here today. Their tackling has just been excellent. Third down and a little more than two here. And the Bison showing blitz. Check it checks off. And now hands off. Nothing. And, yep, there's nothing there. Nope, nothing. Bonsu again, good north-south runner, but he ran into a wall. Yeah, that was Jamel Stewart, defensive lineman, 6'2", 275 from Richmond, Virginia. Solid stop on Bonsu. And the Colonials are going to go three and out because of that. Fourth down and two. George Souders, the third, is in 
to punt it away for Robert Morris, and Jamar Ebron is back to receive. Now you give the ball back to a dangerous Quentin Williams with uh, th three minutes left in the half. Plenty of time for the Bison to put another score on the board. That's why the Colonials were desperate to get a first down there. Souders. Wobbles one downfield. Ebron runs under it. Has to come to a slide stop to make the grab at the 27-yard line, but does so successfully. And that's where Howard will take over. Yeah, Colonial defense going to have to step up here, Chris. They can't let this team break off a big play here. Got a big play to get back in the lead. It was a big play kickoff return from 88 yards out by Ian Wheeler after Robert Morris had tied the game at seven. Nashon Hezekiah has an eight-yard catch for a touchdown from Quentin Williams. Chase Jackson has a 13-yard reception from Anthony Chicken for Robert Morris. Wheeler's touchdown, the kickoff return from 88 yards, the difference in the ball game right now. And once again, keep your eye on Quentin Williams taking off from that pocket. You've got to keep him bottled up here. Motion by Iaraza out to the right side. Play action. Williams throws. Tight end catch at the 30, 35, 40, and he gets tumbled finally at around the 44-yard line. Making the grab that time was Brennan Brown, the senior out of Dallas. No huddle offense. Hurry up offense for uh, Bison. Williams will hand off this time and breaking tackles and wow. still on his feet running the football again is going to be Ian Wheeler, the man who scored on that long return yeah. for the touchdown. Beautiful run by Wheeler. Made three Colonials miss. They got a little something cooking here, the Bison. Moving the ball beautifully against this Colonial defense. They've been pretty good up to this drive. They've given up some big plays here. Coach Clark upset with the defense, giving them... A little bit of guff yep. out there as he calls Robert Morris's first time out of the half. 2.58 left here in the second quarter. Howard with a 14-7 lead, and you're right, Jim. They, are, they, they put some gas in the yep. tank. You know, it goes back to the offense not being able to pick up a first down. They could have, even if they didn't score, they could have at least uh, ate some time off the clock. Here's a replay of that beautiful run. Was one missed tackle, two missed tackles, and the third guy brings him down. Ian Wheeler getting it heated up here. Yeah. He's shifty. Strong runner. First and 10, Howard. Ball sitting at the Robert Morris 36th. Colonials trailing 14 to 7. Under three minutes to go, first half. Williams in the pistol. Wheeler, the running back to his right shoulder. Gets the handoff again. Starts left, cuts back right. And they finally catch up with him after he gains yardage down to the 33. Wheeler, the ball carrier. Wheeler really, really shifty out there, showing his stuff right now. Yeah, he is. He's breaking some tackles now, running hard. It's one of the Colonials hanging on for dear life. I believe that was Joe Cassell. Cassell was there. Jasa Diakiti was there as well. Down Howard seven. looking at second down and seven. Three receivers to the right. Williams taking his time. Dumps it over to the left. That ball is caught. Wow. And big yardage and a big gain all the way down inside the 10-yard line for the receiver, Eden James. I think if James wouldn't have slipped, I think he had a good chance to get into the end zone. Here's Williams in the hurry up. He's going to hand it to James. James is going to run inside the five and get dragged down at around the three-yard line. Casal again making the stop on the play for Robert Morris. And the clock will stop with 1.41 to go, and the officials are going to huddle up now. What a drive this has been by uh, the Bison. They took over with about three minutes to play, so two minutes they marched right down the field against this Colonial defense, who up to that point had been pretty stout. Illegal formation, offense, more than four players in the backfield. Five-yard penalty. Repeat first down. So an illegal formation will cost them that play. Yeah, it'll send them back five yards. Make it a little tougher. Thank you. So look at Eden James once again making that catch in the run. Yeah, he slipped it about the five-yard line trying to cut back. 
This is a big stand for the clones. You don't mind giving up three here. But you don't want to give up seven. I can put them in a deep hole here. Line of scrimmage moves back to the 11, almost to the 12-yard line. Right now, Williams trying to settle his offense down. Williams. Little collision in the backfield. He's going to call his own number, and he'll run to the right, and he'll turn it into the end zone for a touchdown. Quentin Williams. We told you during the pregame talk that he can run the football. The graduate student out of Upper Marlboro, Maryland, showed that he can. Yeah, absolutely. That was a nice design play. He knew he was going to run the whole time. Colonials lost some containment on the left side of the defensive line. There's a penalty flag there, Chris. You don't know what that's for. Something happened after the touchdown. Yeah, they have the kick team out there already. Yeah. You can see the officials are chatting again. By the way, the referee is Douglas Mercer. He's working with his crew today. Here at Joe Walton Stadium. Yeah, Quentin Williams is quite the weapon for the Howard Bison. You don't know what he's going to do. Good runner, good passer. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct. Defense number three. That 15-yard penalty will be enforced on the kickoff. This is number three's first unsportsmanlike foul of the game. Rob Carter Jr., Penalized for unsportsmanlike conduct nice. after the touchdown was scored, so count it. Yeah, that'll be uh, tacked on to the kickoff, I believe. Mm -hmm. Extra point by Dylan West is true. And the Bison of Howard University lead it 21-7 to now over Robert Morris. Wow, that the Colonials was a, worked hard to tie this ball game up, and yep. then they give up the, the long kickoff return and now a big drive here. Too. Absolutely. They, they had played pretty good defense up to that last drive. I just could not contain Quentin Williams. He made a lot of good decisions. He passed when he had people open. He took off when he uh, didn't have anybody open. And really nice running by uh, Wheeler on this uh, drive. That was their best drive of the game. And here's the touchdown right here, Chris. Good little in-and-out move. Scores easily. If we can see what the penalty was here. I don't know what the yeah, penalty would have been. Looks like we're not going to. No. <laughs> Unsportsmanlike against Robert Morris. So look where West is yeah. going to kick off from. Yeah, he exactly. is standing right at the 50-yard line. So any chance of some type of return is out the windows. The Cardinals make their third major mistake here this half. 21-7, to Howard in the lead. You know, minute 26 is a lot of time. Yeah. Go up, maybe get a field goal at least, get some type of score on the board before half. Now that's pretty much nullified here. Uh, you know, with this, uh, not going to get good field position. West will put it up into the air, and it will go beyond the end line. Yeah. And the Colonials will get the ball at the 25-yard line. Yeah. So that's still go. pretty decent. Yeah, 75 yards I got to go now. Yeah, I'm wondering why coaches don't squib it down. I don't either. I, when they're at the 50. I like agree. That. I totally agree. I guess they'd rather have not somebody picking the ball up and running in the back, which is you know tough to do when on a squib kick. Yeah. And when I say that, the coaches usually say, "Why don't you just stay in the booth?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. How many kickoffs did you run back? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Well, I ran one back in junior high school, Chris. So. Did you? Yeah, I know. Did you take it all the way to the house? <laughs> I did. <laughs> oh, my man. <laughs> all right, here's Chicket back in there. Big rush. He stays alive. He completes the pass, but only for a one-yard gain out to the left side flat. Yeah, Colonials have to be careful not to make a mistake here. Don't turn the ball over at least. Get to go in even if you're down 22 scores in the halftime. Don't make a mistake here. Ridgely making that grab. Give him a two-yard pickup. Now Chickett calling for the snap. Zipping one. And that one is going to be complete out to about the 32-yard line. And it'll be O'Sullivan making the grab. He lost his sneaker that time. Not too many yards after catch here today for the Colonials. Every time they catch a ball, they try to get some more extra yards. It's a great tackling, I think. I'm very impressed with the Howard Bison tackling. Check it again. Screen pass left. This one is caught. It's going to be a first down. It's O'Sullivan still on the rug and running. And he'll be run out at around the 41, 42-yard line. 
And the Colonials with just 31 seconds left are on the march right now. Sullivan did run out of bounds, so the clock won't start. Check it. Looking right this time. Zips one, trying to hit Cooper, and a collision, and they're going to say no flags on that play. Cooper incomplete that time, and Clayton Perrin might have hit him I right thought, as the ball was, was, was arriving. Yeah, I thought uh, his hand was on uh, his back. Here's the replay. Yeah, that was definitely interference, definitely interference. that time. Yeah. And Howard got away with one there. It, would have, it wouldn't have been a very long game, but still. Second down and 10. What this does is stops the clock, yeah. so that helps. 27 seconds left in the half. Colonials trailing by two touchdowns now. Somebody's got to make a big play here for the Colonials. Check it. Pump fake. Robinson makes the catch. A center screen. He breaks a tackle. And he's only able to get up to about the 47, 48-yard line. Yeah, again, excellent tackling. Timeout called. 26 left on the first half clock as we take another look at that play. He almost got out of there. And uh, Darian Brokenberg, that was a defensive lineman hustling down the field, making that tackle from behind. 21 to 7 is the score. Bernard Clark Jr. not happy with his ball club right now after giving up 14 consecutive points. He's hoping that the offense can get something big to happen right here. Something within these next 20 ticks of the clock. It is third down and five. The ball is sitting 53 yards away from the end zone. Colonials have it at their own 47. Colonials have one timeout left, so if they can get something big down the middle of the field and call a timeout, might be able to get a field goal. Here's Ridgely coming behind the set. Chick it, trying to run out, ah. trying to stay alive, and then got tumbled down. That's going to be a loss of six for the Colonials. And unless Robert Morris calls a timeout quickly here, this is going to be the half. And maybe they're out of timeouts. Maybe they use no, the ball, but said, they're done. Yeah, there was one on the scoreboard, but I guess that's it. Or, or maybe did Bernard Clark just refused to take it. That could be. We're at halftime. It is Howard 21. Robert Morris 7 with our entire crew here at Joe Walton Stadium and with Jim Elias, Chris Shovlin here on ESPN+. Plus. Good to have you with us.
a beautiful day it is here in Pittsburgh in western Pennsylvania. The fall colors on the trees starting to bud. And, uh, boy, we started having a really good football game for a while there. And then Robert Morris, the wheels kind of came off. They're down 21-7 to to the Howard Bison right now. They had tied the ball game up at 7-7, then gave up a long kickoff return for a touchdown and then uh, Howard was able to drive long downfield to score again. Now special teams and penalties uh, really hurt the Colonials in that first half. I, I didn't think they played a bad first half. Uh, defense played really well. Can't get the running game going. That's going to have to improve in the second half. But all in all, a decent first half. But the, I was really impressed with the Bison, the way they tackle. Uh, they just There's no yards after catch for the Colonials. Yeah, absolutely. Let's take a look at the stat sheet here at halftime and uh, see what, we, uh, what we've got going here at uh, Joe Walton Stadium as far as numbers are concerned. Rushing yards, yeah, uh, nothing to write home about. 35 for uh, the Bison, 27 for Robert Morris. But look at the passing yards, uh, over 100 yards uh, for Quentin Williams. Uh, total yardage, not that big a difference so far. And really the big difference in the ball game was the kickoff return and the mistakes that exactly. Robert Morris made. Uh, when you have two even teams, it's going to be the little things like penalties and uh, special teams play that's going to decide the end of this game. And right now, the Bison uh, have made less mistakes than the Colonials. Yeah. Two penalties against Robert Morris, two penalties against Bison, but the ones against Robert Morris have been stingers. Coming back with more, coming up.
been a good ball game so far at Joe Walton Stadium here in the West Hills of Pittsburgh. Chris Shovlin, Jim Elias on the call here on ESPN+. Plus, But it's gone Howard's way since the middle of the second period of play. Colonials actually tied the ball game up at 7, and then Howard has scored twice since. Let's take a look at what we saw in the first half here at the Joe. Of course, the Colonials uh, trotting out with the all-blue uniforms on here today as uh, Quentin Williams went to work early, Jim. Yeah, he's a dangerous quarterback. Six foot five, 205 pounds with a great arm. There's a great pass right there. That was to Hezekiah. Hezekiah. Yep. And here's Anthony Chickett. A nice little pass, dump off to uh, ja Chase Jackson for the touchdown. And this is the big play, Chris. This is the backbreaker right here. Ethan, Ian Willard catches the ball at about the 15-yard line. And, and watch this. It doesn't get touched right there maybe a little bit. But other than that, he's gone. Great speed. He was a big factor in the first half, Ian Wheeler. And there's Quentin Williams around the end. Quarterback 6'5", taking off. He's going to score. Anytime they get inside the 10-yard line, they're going to be tough to stop down there because he's a uh, dual threat pass.
21 to 7 here at Joe Alton Stadium in Moon Township, Pennsylvania, just outside of Pittsburgh in the West Hills. Let's take a look at the out of town scoreboard presented today by the Sheraton Pittsburgh Airport, an official hotel partner of the RMU Colonials. Only game going on right now is uh, Penn State and Northwestern. They're at halftime. It's 10 10, of course, in the Oh, uh, Big South OBC, only one game going on right now. That's Bryant and Rhode Island tied up at 7. That's a non-conference game. And uh, a couple of other ball games uh, taking place a little bit later today, including Pitt in Blacksburg at Virginia Tech. I understand Phil Jerkovic is going to get the nod at quarterback tonight at 8 o'clock for you Panther fans. And that's a look at our out-of-town scoreboard presented by the Sheraton Pittsburgh Airport, the official hotel partner of the RMU Colonials. We're going to take a time out. When we return, we'll get you set up for the second half. Again, Howard has taken a 21-7 lead over Robert Morris. Hey, we have some news and notes from the Big South OBC Conference. Uh, and I'll tell you what, MJ Flowers, what a uh, week that he's had. Flowers was named the National Freshman of the Week 
And he is from Eastern Illinois, the running back, named National Freshman of the Week by Stats Perform after his performance against McNeese. Carried the ball 37 times for 272 yards. That's the most rushing yards by any NCAA player, FBS or FCS, or even Division II or Division III this season. He leads all freshmen nationally in rushing yards per game at 74. And how about Bryant's Ethan Getman? We're going to see him in a couple of weeks when we're up in North Smithfield, Rhode Island. He nailed three field goals in Bryant's win last week. Uh, they beat Princeton 16-13. to He kicked a 38-yarder with a buck 37 to play to force overtime, then nailed a 37-yarder in the OT to win the game. His three field goals in that contest tied a Bryant record. So congratulations to those guys, MJ Flowers, of Eastern Illinois and Bryant University's Ethan Getman. We'll see both of them later on this year. Right now it's 21 to 7. Howard leading Robert Morris. And we're getting set for the third period. It's going to start right after we return here on ESPN Plus. Stay with us. Uh, and really, you know, he's found Hezekiah, uh, who replaced um, him, Hawthorne, in the starting lineup today, and that's how they got on the board first. Man, how about Ian Wheeler, too, coming oh, yeah. in and uh, contributing? Uh, we knew he was a pretty good running back, but he uh, runs that kickoff back. Uh, that, was the, that was the big play in the first half was that, that kick return. That turned the whole game. Truly did. Right now, Howard on its sideline getting ready to – Start the third period of play. Have to feel pretty good about themselves right now. They're in the lead, 21-7, a 14-point advantage over Robert Morris on the road here today. Yeah, that's that's the key. On the road, you're up two scores in the first half. You know, let's see how they come out, whether they get a little more conservative and try to eat time off the clock. I, I got a feeling they're going to gamble. Still play the, uh, you know, cut loose with uh, Quentin Williams. I don't think I would have liked to have spent the last 20 <laughs> minutes with that guy right there in <laughs> no. that locker room. Yeah, when you said it was a nice day in Pittsburgh at halftime, I'm thinking not in that locker room where the Colonials <laughs> are with Bernard Clark Jr. I'm sure he was letting them have it a little bit. Not pleased. You know, what bothers him more than anything was the mental mistakes, the uh, you know, the personal foul penalties, Chris. Sure. Uh, sure. He doesn't like that. And obviously the uh, kick return. Uh, special teams guys, that's what they're there for. They're, they're, they're supposed to not make uh, mistakes, and uh, special teams really hurt you, hurt them in the first half with that big kickoff return. All right, here's a Michael Velasco with a kick. And he's going to angle it over to the far side. It's going to be a fair catch, and it's going to be made at the 25-yard line by one of the up men, and that is Keenan Fortenberry, a defensive lineman from Philadelphia. <laughs> fielding that kickoff. Wow, that's a pretty nice catch for a defensive lineman. So the Colonials decide they don't want to give it back to Ian Wheeler. No, nope, no. Nope. It'll be first down and 10. Howard with the ball as we start the third period of play here in sunny Pittsburgh. 21 to 7. Howard leading Robert Morris. And the first uh, series of the second half is always a big one, especially for the team that's behind. So the Colonials need a maybe a good three and out here. They haven't had one for a while. As uh, Quentin Williams got that offense revved up there in the first half, and they're 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 playing with a lot of confidence right now. Williams calling for the snap and the pistol. The Colonials showing blitz. He gives it to Hunter. Hunter dashes through everybody almost, 
and he'll run it forward up to the 33-yard line where he's wrapped up and thrown down hard by Rob Carter, Jr. That's a pickup of seven yards, though. Yeah, really nice move. Watch this quickness. To avoid the tackle right here, bang. Puts that foot down, pushes off, able to get about seven yards. And got some good blocks coming out of that hole, too. Second down and three, a short three. Hunter again to the right. And Hunter this time is going to be wrestled down before he can get to the yard to gain. Good play that time. Tyler King made the initial hit, and Carter came in to help out. Just short of first down, about a yard to go. This is big. Colonials need to toughen up right here. Hunter again. Hunter hit in the oh. backfield and wrapped up, but they blew the play dead. Penalty flag down. It could be a false start call. There you go. That'll cost them five and push the ball back to the 30. That's funny. Clones did have that stop. But you can see the right, yeah, the whole right side of the uh, Bison line moved. So this is a big, big, big down right here. Colonials need to step up right here. Put a stop to this drive. Penalties burn the Colonials in the first half. Let's see if they can affect Howard here in this third period of play. Williams looking to throw. Wings one to Hunter coming out of the backfield. He's able to slip a tackle and get the first down up to the 40. Yeah. Great move by Hunter. Yeah, he, the Colonials had it played perfectly, but they just could not make the tackle. It would have been a tackle for a loss, actually. But I think it was a, I'm not sure, but it looked like a defensive end or a defensive lineman trying to make the tackle one-on-one -on -one with the quick back. First and 10, Howard with the football. Colonial's going to change up the defense. I think that was Garrett Fairman, actually, who uh, almost had that tackle in the backfield. Give to Hunter. Goes right. Hunter slips another tackle and goes for five yards. Noah Steverson had a hand on him and couldn't bring him down. Hunter able to run out of that grab. And Hunter's going to go to the sideline now. He might have been shaken up after the drop. If the Bison can get that running game going, I think that's going to be bad, bad news for the Colonials here. They were able to shut down the running game in the first half. Bison seemed to be moving the ball much, much better here in the second half. Like you said, good blocking up front. Florima, Fairman, and Brown come back into the defensive set for Robert Morris on second down and five for Howard. Slots to both sides. Handoff and a little juke step, a jump step in the backfield for the running back that time, Eden James, who's able to cut up field and get another first down, and Howard keeps chugging along. Yeah, Howard's uh, rotating their backs. They have three of them. They're all built about the same. They're all quick. There's a nice little move, that jump step you had, you talked about, making people miss. First and 10, Howard. Ball sitting at the Colonial 48. Three men left this time. And it will be James staying in the backfield as Hunter gets a rest. Yeah, and you can bet he's going to get the ball again here, Eden James. There he goes. This time running left, spinning out of a tackle, and finally being dragged down from behind on the play. It was Dee Pierce who made the tackle that time. Nine yards into the run. And look at that hole. The Bison are starting to take control of that uh, offensive line. Defense, they're handling the colonial defenders easily in the front, up front, winning the battle. Second down and one now for the Bison. Hezekiah is the wide out to the left side, two men right. Williams, blitz coming from the corner. And running the football straight ahead is going to be Eden James once again. James will get the first down. Into Colonial territory, and they're in the hurry up right now, Jim. From the 37, they get the snap. This is James. Stopped as he goes left. Stacked up and gang tackled down. Yeah, they've moved the ball about 40, 50 yards, all running plays, Chris. So they have even had the throw here in the second half. And But now here's this might be the first pass they are going to attempt this here in the second half. Trey Woods leading the tackling that time for Robert Morris. 
Second down, about ten and a half to go. Williams takes the snap at the 42. Looks left the whole way. Tight end was open. Instead, oh. he's going to throw down over the middle, and that ball is caught. And this time, it is Richie Iraza who makes the catch on the play, and it looks like it's coming back. Wow. They're going to say no catch. Mm -hmm. I thought he had it, but it might have hit the ground. Wide open out there. Let's see if we can get a look at it from this angle. Yeah. Nice pass here again by Quentin Williams. Put it right on the numbers. Yep, oh, it yeah. did come out. It rolled, he rolled over on wow. it and it came out. Never was able to secure it, so it's third down and 11. Good break for the Colonials. Let's see if they can take advantage of this now. Williams, quarterback draw. And he gets wrapped up and thrown down. Steverson on his backside that time. Able to grab him and yank him down to the turf at the 35-yard line. So a short gain, but now Howard is looking at fourth down. Yeah, I think they're going to go for it, too. Yeah, I don't think they can have a field goal kicker that can kick it that far. It is fourth down and seven. Line of scrimmage is the 35. And they're going to switch things up here. They're going to try to punt it and yeah, pin I've, Robert Morris back way deep. I think that's probably the good move. You have a, you're up two scores. Why take a chance? Aaron Bickerton is the punter. I don't know if we've seen him so far today. Flag down. I think he had one punt in the first half. I think you're right. Now that you now yeah, I think it's for like that. about 45 yards. Pretty good punter. So he's going to... Five-yard penalty, fourth down. So he's going to try to pin the Colonials back inside the 10-yard line. And, Jim, actually, he's punted twice today, so... Okay. Wasn't in my memory bank for some reason. <laughs> yeah, he's averaging it, 45 and a half yards. He a hasn't punt. punted for a while yeah. because the uh, last few drives, Howard has really done a nice job moving the ball, mostly running. So Bickerton is on again after a delay of game penalty. It's fourth down and 12. And he's able to pop that thing high. Fair catch is going to be called for, and this is going to be fair caught, and that will pin the Colonials back at their own eight-yard line. There's a timeout on the field here at Joe Walton Stadium. 8.53 to go in the third. Howard, 21-7 over Robert Morris. Chicken, onions, peppers, and cheese have potential. Together, they have a purpose, a destiny, and a name. Because grilled to order makes a sub above. There's over 450 million hoopers out there. One will outscore the country and put Norman on the map. Less than 1% of high school players get a scholarship. Odds a freshman will lead the nation in points and assists? One and never been done. 1.3% of college players get drafted. Only one will drop 48 and 11 in the conference finals. One will know this is just the beginning. Trey had a one and a half billion chance to get here, but he saw a possibility. This is a story about strength. It wakes up early in the morning, stays up late, moves mountains, and travels the world. It makes adventure and hard work possible. Strength delivers food to tables, packages to doorsteps, products to stores, and kids to practice. It shows up everywhere you show up. Hercules tires are built for almost every driver and every vehicle. Find the right Hercules for your story and let our strength drive yours. I'm thirsty. Try this. Star. It's a new lemon lime soda that's crisp, clear, and... So refreshing. So tasty. What the? Just let it happen. No! Oh, chill. He was a soda. New Starry Lemon Lime Soda. It's different. If our turkey had a resume, it would say it's 99% fat-free, filler-free, and raised without antibiotics. But our turkey already has its dream job at Jersey Mike's. 
premium meat makes a sub above. Well, again, Robert Morris will start with its back to the wall. First down and 10 from the nine yard line. Yeah, they'll try to run it out of here and uh, haven't been very successful running the ball. There's a short pass, which is almost like a run. That's Chase Jackson once again making that grab. Jackson picking up just two on the pass play from yeah. Chicken. And uh, Jackson's hurt, Chris. Looks like his shoulder. I think on this tackle, he got yanked down. Yeah. Ooh. And he'd come out, and he's hardly moving his arm. He's had a good game for the Colonials, too, so can it ill afford to lose him? He has a touchdown catch in this contest. You're absolutely right. Wide split to the left this time for Chickett. They're going to run the ball, though. A little stutter step move, and Bonsu will try to run it up the gut. They get it out to about the 14, check that, the 13-yard line, and they're looking at third down and five. Big third down. Here, here's the replay. Not much of a hole. Right now, the, uh, the Bison aren't even uh, respecting the passing game of the Colonials. Now they will. They'll play pass now. Trips to the right, single man to the left. Third down and five for Chicket at the 13. Anthony being pursued. Little whirly bird turn. Tries to run it around the left end and could not get there. He was looking for a block, and Chicket is going to be slow in getting up. Yeah, real nice rush by the Bison. Chase pick it up, chick it out of the pocket. And we're able to run him down before he made the first down. Clones are going to have to punt. He's going to have good field position for the Howard Bison. There's the rush right there, number 14. That would be uh, Jamari, Jabari Knighton. Now the Colonials have to punt. George Souders is in. He'll wobble one downfield. It's going to be caught. No fair catch called. Four at the 45, and the return is on over the 50 and into Colonial territory down to the 48-yard line. On the return that time, Jamar Ebron, the wide receiver from D.C. And again, Howard is going to start with fine field position when we come back. 6.43 left in the third. It's our 21-7 over Robert Morris.
It's been two years in the making, but Robert Morris Hockey is finally back in the Berg at Clearview Arena. Next Saturday, it's a college hockey doubleheader as the RMU women's hockey team takes on St. Anselm at 2 p.m. Then the Robert Morris men battle Bowling Green in the nightcap at 7. Tickets for all RMU hockey games are on sale now. Get them at Ticketmaster. Uh, nice to see hockey back. It is. Derek Schooley, head coach of the, uh, he always does a nice job with the Colonial Hockey team, but he's rebuilding for a second time here. Yeah, he sure is. Mm -hmm. But if anybody can do it, it's yeah. Derek Schooley. <laughs> Play action fake. Williams sends it over the middle. It's complete again. Look out, it's wow. Ian Wheeler, and Ian Wheeler's out to wow. the races. There's Wheeler down the sideline. Can he get there? No, he's going to be shoved out of bounds at the last possible second. Wheeler is on fire here he today. Uh, he's just making people miss. The first tackle, the tackler never gets him anymore. There it is there, missed tackle, and bang, he makes you pay. Love how he, love how he changes direction, Chris. He puts that foot down, and it just explodes. Quick pass to the right, and a dive to the one-yard line on the reception that time. Braylon Smith, the running back. He'll move it all the way down to the goal line. Didn't get in. And now we have an injured Colonial down. Timeout. Cramps. It looks like cramps. Uh, I can't see who that is. Uh, Coach Clark is headed out there. Looked like Dee Pierce, maybe. Dee Pierce. Dee Pierce being checked on by Coach Clark right now. The rest of the Colonials huddled up, as you see. 21 to 7. They're down. And Howard ready to score again with just over six minutes left in the third period of play. They're up 21 to 7 on the Colonials. Yeah, this uh, Colonials need something uh, a, a turnover here badly. They haven't had one all day. Need a fumble recovery or some type of uh, interception, a batted ball, something. They need a big play, Chris. They haven't had many big plays here at all, either offensively or defensively today. And we're in the injury timeout. You know, we we're talking about hockey returning. I stopped at basketball practice this morning. I know you go quite often mm -hmm. because, you know, you live just down the street. And uh, Andy Toole and the Colonials are looking pretty good. The men's basketball team working out this morning. And they saw me peeking in the window from up on the third floor. So they waved me down and said, come down here. You sit in here. So <laughs> I watched practice for about 45 minutes this morning. It I was thought, pretty entertaining. Yeah, I thought maybe they were going to put you out on the floor to cover somebody. No, they know better. <laughs> they know better. Yeah, I think they're going to be pretty good this year. Very competitive in the Horizon League. Uh, he's done a good job of bringing in some really talented recruits. So uh, it's going to be an exciting basketball season after, uh, of course, after football here. Mm -hmm. Well, they're going to open up with uh, an exhibition game against the Penn State Nittany Lions. That's a team that yep. went two games deep into the NCAA tournament last year. And they take on Penn State in exhibition to benefit coaches versus cancer. That's going to be Friday, October 27th at the UPMC Event Center right next door. Get all the details on RMU Penn State and all the group and season ticket sales information by calling 412-397-4949 or go to rmucolonials.com. I might stop back in and watch practice again this week. I was I, I was pretty pleased. Heck I yeah, mean, yeah, come on down. I, I enjoy going over there watching, but right now I'd, like, I'd enjoy seeing the Colonials so maybe create a turnover here because... <laughs> Howard's about ready to go in the score here. Quarterback keeper <laughs> off the left side. I don't see a signal just yet. Yeah, touchdown. Yep. Okay, they got in. Quentin Williams, the quarterback, yeah, able he, to sneak it in. 6'5", 205, he's getting in. Yeah, he gets a little help from his friends, somebody pushing him in. Yeah, right there on the goal line there. He's under there. He's in. Boys, Howard Bison have really taken control of this game. They have come out. They even they look sharper here in the second half than they did in the first half. West on to kick. And it's a good one. 28-7, Howard's lead now over Robert Morris with 5.43 left here in the third period of play. 
I guess maybe it's not that nice today if you're a Robert Morris fan here in Pittsburgh at the Joe. When we talk about hockey, um, we're talking about football, of course. We talked about basketball a little bit earlier. Let's talk about baseball. Your nephew is the general <laughs> manager of the Baltimore Orioles. They're in first place in the American League East, and they're on fire. Right yeah, they, uh, they, they lost 110 games like two years ago. This year, they've won 100 games. So he, he's done an incredible job of uh, turning them around. So, uh, yeah, he brought in uh, Adley Rushman, uh, his uh, number one pick a few years ago. And ever since this guy steps on the baseball field, the whole franchise turned around. It's I think, amazing. I think we can get him to move to Pittsburgh someday. Yeah, I, I told I asked him. I asked his <laughs> wife, actually. Uh, he's married to a Tambellini from the Tambellini uh, restaurant family. Oh, sure. They, he, she wouldn't mind coming back to Pittsburgh. Okay. But uh, I don't know if he would come back or not. <laughs> Maybe. All right, the big question is, are you going to get to go to the playoffs? Yeah, I hope so. Yeah, I think I will. Here's West kick. Down to the nine. Uh-oh. Big hole. There we go. And again, a return out to the 45-yard line by the Colonials. Yeah, it's almost imperative the Colonials score here, Chris. This... Uh, possession. They must score to get back in this game a little bit. From the 44-yard line, it's going to be first down and 10. We have 5.37 left in the third, but Robert Morris is down three scores. And Jim, you're absolutely right. It is imperative for them to get on the board right now. Yeah. Can't waste time. No, because every time Howard's going to get the ball back, they're going to eat time off the clock. they got the running game going, so Colonials need to score immediately. Chickett's going to go up top. He has all five men out wide. Anthony in the pocket. Time running out. And he has the ball knocked loose. It looks like the Colonials may have recovered back at the 41-yard line, but Howard was on him big time. Yeah, this is this is what happens when you're come playing from behind. Here's the uh, replay. Bang! Great play, number 96, Jamal Stewart. He's made a couple nice plays today. Ryan O'Hare found the loose ball on the turf and recovered it for Robert Morris, saving the possession. And now we have an injured Bison down on the field back at the 41, the line of scrimmage, where it's going to be second down and uh, 12 and a half when we get going here. There's a look at the sideline for Howard and Bernard Clark Jr. Again, another mistake by his ball club. 5.09 to go here in the third quarter. Howard up 
28 to 7 up big on Robert Morris. Here's another look. There was nobody open. Chick had had to hang on to the ball, and he ends up getting sacked, stripped. Colonials recovered it, fortunately, but. There's going to be, uh, they're, they're just pinning, the, the Howard Bison are just pinning their ears back right now. No respect at all for the Colonial running game. You're Colonial. right about Jamel Stewart, too. That was, he brought the axe yep. out there. I don't know if that's number 99, Hurt. I can't see the uh, number. I can see the one number, but. I'm not sure they're working on him right now. Yeah. If you're looking at the Colonials on the sideline. 28 to 7 deficit for Robert Morris here. The last non-conference game of the season. The rest of the way, Robert Morris is going to be in the Big South slash Ohio Valley Conference. As we'll head to Gardner Webb next Saturday for a four o'clock kickoff. I know that uh, on some schedules it's listed as a 6 p.m. start. They moved it up by a couple of hours. But I'll be down at Gardner-Webb on the RMU Athletics Game Day app next week. You'll be able to listen to that uh, audio only, and uh, I'll have the call for you starting at 4. The pregame show will be at 345 from Gardner-Webb next week. The following week, the Colonials will be on the road at Bryant for another 4 o'clock start. They don't return home until the 28th of October when they take on Tennessee Tech for the first time. That'll be a noon kick. Go on the road November 4th at Southeast Missouri State for a 2 o'clock start. And then on November 11th and November 18th, they'll play Charleston Southern and Eastern Illinois respectively here at home as they continue to work on the injured player for Howard. Again, we talked basketball a little bit earlier, but the Penn State Nittany Lions are headed to Robert Morris in Moon Township. Yeah, that's right, Robert Morris basketball hosting Penn State in an exhibition game to benefit coaches versus cancer. One of our favorite charities, no doubt. Friday, October 27th at the UPMC Event Center. You can get all the details on RMU slash Penn State and all the RMU basketball season and group ticket information by calling 412-397-4949 or go to rmucolonials.com. That was Dion Harry, Chris, number 19, who's hurt. He's going off the field right now for the uh, Howard Bison. All right, Chickett, after getting stripped of the football on that last play, now has his offense set at the 41-yard line where it's second down and 13. Triangle trips to the right. Play action fake. Chickett over the middle. It's complete. And the Colonials will move the ball into... Howard territory to the 47-yard line as Chase Jackson makes another catch. Yes, yeah, a nice play, nice pass. Good, he had some time. Chicken had time. He was able to uh, find Chase Jackson. You give him time, he's he's going to complete some passes. They're going to run the football this time, and the Colonials will clobber it through the line of scrimmage to get the first down and a three-yard pickup. They'll move the chains. Badly needed. First down for the Colonials. Now it's a uh, reset, start over, keep this drive going. Come on, O'Sullivan, getting that run. I think every possession is probably going to be a four-down possession anyway. They're going to go for it. They're so they're uh, three scores behind. Five wide set for Chicket. Looks, throws. There's O'Sullivan. He gets cracked as soon as he makes the catch and tries to make the turn at the 40-yard line. He'll be driven backwards on the play. Good stop that time by Jabari Knighton. Colonials do pick up three. Yeah, look at that tackle. There's just no yards after catch for the Colonials. None they at just all. can't get anything. Howard very well coached and well prepared for this game because the Colonials have been just fantastic on yak yards, as yep. they call them. Mm -hmm. Not today. Second down, seven. Anthony looking left. Low ball, but it's fielded. And grabbing that one is Noah Robinson. He had to go down below the knees to get that one at the 36-yard line. The Colonials advance the yard marker, but it's third down and three. Yeah, he's the guy they got to get going, Noah Robinson. But what a great job the Howard Bison have done 
They knew he was uh, a talented receiver, and they've really shut him down today. Under three minutes left in the third period of play. Howard 28, Robert Morris 7. The Colonials come up to the line of scrimmage on third and three. Robinson in motion to the left. Chicken under center. Now he brings him back right. He's going to hand it off to him. Robinson. He'll be hit in the backfield once or wow. twice. And finally, he's thrown to the boundary line on the near side. The last man to knock him out was, again, Jabari Knighton. But he took about three or four shots as they drove him sideways. Yeah, the guy who made the play originally was Clayton Perrin, the defensive back. He came up and uh, just shut Robinson down. Would not not allow him to get to the outside. And then the rest of the guys run into the football like they're taught to do. They clean it up. Jam, it's fourth down and three, and the Colonials don't have a choice. They no, have to they go got to go. Here. Absolutely. Like I said, every possession probably will be a four down. Boy, that's costly right there. Five-yard yep. penalty for an illegal substitution. And that moves the ball back to the 41. So instead of fourth and three, it's going to be fourth down and eight. And now they're going to bring the punt unit out. I don't know. We'll watch for a fake punt here or something. I, I don't know if I would punt it. <laughs> I think I might go for it. Time, it's only minute 40. Uh, you only got one more quarter left. A minute 45 left in the third, and you got one quarter after that. Well, we'll see if they fake or they'll play the field position game. They've got Souders in there, and he's good. Yeah. Now Sends punt. one up. Backwards spin on the ball. It's going to hit at the five and go into the end zone. He was trying to put some English on that thing. Jamar Ebron saw that, ran away from it, and it'll be a touchback. So the Bison will get the ball back, and that dangerous, dangerous quarterback of theirs, Quentin Williams, will have his hands on the rock again with 91 seconds left here in the third period of play, and the Colonials defensively trying to figure something out. Yeah, well, if you're going to go for it, if you're going to just punt right there, now you got to come up with a uh, three and out here. Absolutely. You cannot let this team... Right, march down the field with one of these long drives with their running game, which is really on rolling right now. Colonials have not stopped the run here in the second half. Since Robert Morris tied it up at 7-7, that was back at the 546 mark of the second period of play, Howard has scored three consecutive touchdowns, one on an 88-yard kickoff return by Ian Wheeler and two on runs by Quinton Williams. And now Williams is going to hand off, and they'll get it over the 20 up to the 22-yard line. And carrying the mail that time for Howard was Eden James for a two-yard game. Garrett Fairman on the stop. Nice tackle, but he injured himself a little bit. He's coming off the field right now. Fairman out of Thomas Jefferson High School in the deep south hills of Pittsburgh. Played for one of the greatest coaches in WPIL history, Bill Chirpak. Yeah. I remember when he played for Pitt, Bill yeah. Chirpak. yeah. Fairman says that's one of his favorite people. Oh, Here's a pass over wow. the middle. And almost having his head removed that time wow. was Jamar Ebron, but he was able to hang on at the 30-yard line and take the hit from Rob Carter, Jr. Wow. He laid the lumber on him. Rob Carter with a great hit. Problem is it was 15 yards down the field. Check that. That was D. Pierce. My bad Pierce. call. Yeah, that's hard to see the numbers. Yes, I, I, I couldn't tell if it was D. Pierce or Rob Carter Jr. It was D. Pierce. I could tell by the hair. Yeah. <laughs> that's how I used to call soccer. <laughs> Here's a run to the right side. And running that sweep, a power sweep, is Eden James. And talk about power. There was some good power coming off that line of scrimmage that time as they're able to drive it up about eight yards downfield. Yeah, big boys up front doing the job for uh, the Bison. We've come to the end of the third period of play. And it is Howard, 28-7 to over Robert Morris. Been all Bison since the middle of the second period of play, and it continues to be that way. Robert Morris needs to find some gas in the tank when we return for the fourth period. A secret to what actually happens behind the scenes at a bank. Here at First Citizens, we're trying to educate the client in each step of what's actually going to happen and actually have them make the educated decision around what steps and what options they utilize. We want to become that trusted advisor that actually guides them down that road, helping you reach your goals. 
That's Forever First. This is a story about strength. It wakes up early in the morning, stays up late, moves mountains, and travels the world. It makes adventure and hard work possible. Strength delivers food to tables, packages to doorsteps, products to stores, and kids to practice. It shows up everywhere you show up. Hercules tires are built for almost every driver and every vehicle. Find the right Hercules for your story and let our strength drive yours. There's over 450 million hoopers out there. One will outscore the country and put Norman on the map. Less than 1% of high school players get a scholarship. Odds a freshman would lead the nation in points and assists? One ain't never been done. 1.3% of college players get drafted. Only one would drop 48 and 11 in the conference finals. One would know this is just the beginning. Trey had a one and a half billion chance to get here, but he saw a possibility. It takes work, determination, and an unstoppable drive to reach your goal. That's what you just did, Pittsburgh. You fought to bring D1 hockey back to this city. Words can't express our gratitude, but our actions will. Every practice, every period, every game, we're going to leave everything on the ice for you. You kept us going, Pittsburgh. And thanks to you, we are unstoppable. We understand an upside-down world. But they're writing us off before we get to the starting line. A stalled generation? Who do you think is going to fix all this? We will. Because our future is the future. So we're going to build bridges and hospitals in a day. And feed those left in the cold. We're going to do all this and more. Because we have an appointment with destiny. You're more than a dreamer. You're a doer. Determined, driven, inspired. You may not see it now, but at Robert Morris University, we do. Our highly individualized approach will give you the confidence to try, the freedom to fail, and the support to try again. You'll be transformed, you'll be empowered, and you will be unstoppable. Robert Morris University, unstoppable. Final 15 minutes on the clock, and those guys right there playing very, very well right now. The Howard Bison, they have a 28-7 lead over Robert Morris here in this college football game. Not conference match. Howard, of course, in the MEAC. Robert Morris in the Big South slash OVC. Last non-conference game for both these clubs as we get set for conference play starting next week, but right now you've got some unfinished business out there. Howard with a big lead, 28-7 over Robert Morris in the second all-time meeting between these two clubs. Yeah, they've been impressive, Chris. Um, really, really um, done a great job controlling the time possession. Uh, the running game's gone well. They haven't thrown a lot of passes, but the ones they've thrown, they've hit. Blitz coming from the Colonials, and the Bison trying to run through it. And they're able to get the first down. And the run play successful in the hands of Eden James. Yeah, look at that hole right there. Bang. Big boys up front. Number 77, Anam Donqua, Darius Fox, Seth Hawkins, Tim Artis, and Demetrius Weatherspoon with tight end Brennan Brown. Really done the job. Look at this play off the misdirection this time. The quarterback fakes and Quinton Williams turns it around the left end and runs forward for 11. Another first down for Howard. And they have really taken control of this ball game now in the fourth period of play. Yeah, Colonials don't have an answer for him right now. And the defense is starting to wear down. They've been on the field so much. Long drives by Howard. The yeah, Colonial sub and like three or four to cut the time right now. His uh, coaching staff sees that they're tired. Quentin Williams with 27 yards on the ground, 170 in the air. He's been near perfect, 13 for 16 on the day. Now he's going to run it again. No need to pass for these guys at all. No. I think we're going to see Howard stay on the ground the rest of the way, and there's Williams again turning the left corner for another five. Yeah, absolutely. You're up three three scores with uh, in the fourth quarter with 13 minutes and 30 seconds left. Why, why, pass the bas why pass the ball? 
Williams, pretty good athlete, runs right into D. Pierce. Second down and five now for Howard. Bison can afford to take their time now as Joe Casal just wipes out Ian Wheeler on that run play, and Wheeler didn't have a shot at it. They were going to lose a yard, Howard will. Yeah, big tackle by Joe Cassell. He's had a pretty good game, actually, for the Cardinals. Been on quite a few tackles. That is his fifth of the game, according to our stat sheet. Tyler King, the leading tackler for Robert Morris with seven. Dee Pierce has six. Britton Pasco with four. Cassell now with five tackles, according to the ledger. Darian Brokeberg, the leading tackler for Howard with five on the day. Right now it's Howard's offense. He's trying to chalk up some more numbers. Here's Williams. Blitz coming. He's going to be buried by Garrett Fairman. There's a positive for the Colonial defense. As Fairman came through. Just a complete breakdown this time. First time we've seen this for Howard today. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, he went around the big uh, tackle. Garrett Fairman looking like T.J. Watt on that play. And now Howard's going to have to punt the football away. A spiral downfield. Caught at the 10. And almost a nil return that time. Just a couple of yards on the bring back. As it's a scene Howard didn't like the way he was treated on that, that drop. And now we're going to get a penalty flag. Yep. This is going to be another uh, personal foul penalty, Chris. I, I don't know. That might be on the Colonials. There was some talking going on after the tackle. Douglas Mercer is the referee. As you can see, he and his crew are huddled, huddled up. Boy, Bernard Clark Jr. will not be happy if this is another personal foul on the Colonials. This would be their second or third one? Second one? It'll be the third. I third one? Yeah. Wow. Or two call. I mean, it's probably not going to affect the game any, but he doesn't like this from his uh, players. Doesn't tolerate it. I see the linesman down there talking to Bernard Clark Jr. During the kick, personal foul, illegal, illegal blindside blind block, block, receiving team number yep. 43. After, After the play, play was over, over unsportsmanlike un conduct, conduct, kicking team number 11, both fouls will be enforced. First down, Robert Morris. That is number 11's first unsportsmanlike foul of the game. Timeout. That's Andre Cooper for Robert Morris being penalized. It is 28-7, Howard. Still 11.42 to go. Robert Morris will have the ball when we come back on ESPN+. Plus.
This Big South broadcast is brought to you in part by Hercules Tires. Ride on our strength. Visit HerculesTires.com. Sunbelt Rentals. We have equipment for that. First Citizens Bank. Forever first. And Jersey Mike's. A sub above. 28-7. Howard in the lead. First down and 10, though. Robert Morris with the ball. And the Colonials have got to get something going. So I'm guessing that was either Clayton Perrin or Jarrett Hunter. There are two number twos <laughs> yeah, I saw that. on their roster, one on offense, one on defense. I would guess it would be the, d the defensive player. I'm but, guessing so too. But no. Don't want to. Some tell me he's watching a replay. Yeah. Calling us names right now. Oh, Here's oh, Chicken. Oh. The ball is out. And after a couple of hits behind the line of scrimmage, he lost the rock, but then had to jump back on top of it. And the Colonials will lose a couple on that play. That Chicken's going to have to take a chance and just throw that ball to a receiver and maybe hope he can make a comeback catch. He's looking, looking, looking. Nobody's open. Tries to get out. Drops the ball. Yeah, you, you, I mean, there's a chance that they could pick one off, but you got to go for it. You, you, you have to throw it to somebody or throw it away. Slots to both sides for Anthony. Ridgely in motion behind him. Check it, sets it up over to the right side. Ridgely with a screen catch, and he is tackled for a loss in the backfield by Christian White. There you go. Is that, that great tackling by the secondary of uh, Howard Bison? It's gone on all game, and Christian White with a beautiful tackle. Now it's third down and almost 15 for Robert Morris. The time winding against them, as you can see, under 10 and a half to go. And the scoreboard favoring Howard in a big way. The throw and short passes, Chris, but you got to get some yards after the short. Otherwise, if you can't get any yards after the catch, you're, not, you're wasting your time. Check it, throwing. Ridgely catching. First down, Robert Morris over the 35. A jump move at the 38-yard line, and the Colonials finally get some yardage after the catch and get a first down. Yeah, that was good blocking, pass blocking by the Colonials. It gave Chickett time, and then he's able to find a receiver. Anthony, snap of the knees, throws it over to the right side, and it is incomplete. That time he threw behind the intended receiver. Yeah, that's a shame because he was open. Second down and 10 now for Robert Morris. I think that was O'Sullivan, the intended was receiver. coming out of the back. Yeah, he, he was open. Pass was there. There's a little timing issue there. Trips left. Single man right, O'Sullivan the running back. Again, a low snap. Chicken handles it, gets drilled as he lets go of the ball and passes downfield to the left and is complete to Andre Cooper the second out of Orlando, Florida, the VMI transfer. Still, the Colonials are shy of the first down by a good four yards. It's third and four. The ball sitting at their own 46-yard line. As we take another look at it, and Chicken got rattled on that play. Here's Anthony again. Rolls over the middle. This one goes incomplete. And I thought for sure we would see a flag, but Chase Jackson got hit. Yeah, he must have timed it early. Delivered. Yeah, that was um, Terrence Holland with the hit. But I thought it was a little bit early. It's the second time today the, the timing of the hit by the defensive back has been so close. You kind of questioned it, but now yep. Robert Morris is looking at fourth and four, no flag. Cooper, Ridgely, and Westry are all to the right side. This pretty much might be the ball game. If the Colonials don't make this, Chris, it's yep. going to be tough to get out of this hole. Robinson to the left. Chicken throws over the middle. It's going to be complete. And Ridgely making the catch on a crossing pattern underneath and runs it upfield to the 45-yard line. The Colonials pull another... Interesting play out of the bag of tricks, and they yep. get the first down. That was well, well run, that play. Beautiful. 
Just a little cross underneath, and Robinson was out blocking. Yeah, it was great blocking by Robinson. Really nice blocking. Check it again. Wrap around handoff. And this ball is going to go down to the 41 yard line. Pick up a four on the rush. There's a new running back in. That's DJ Moyer out of Winston Salem, North Carolina. The Elon transfer, his first carry of the day. Yeah, sophomore. Second down and five. Check it. Drops back into the pocket. Steps up. Now throws long downfield. It's going to be intercepted down at the eight-yard line. Picked off, and the return is on by Kenny Gallup, and he'll return it back to the 35-yard line, and Howard shuts Robert Morris down. Gallup, the senior defensive back out of Portsmouth, Virginia, comes up with a pick with 8.03 to go here in the fourth period of play. Howard continues to lead it. 28 to 7 on ESPN Plus. Whether it's the practice field or weight room, in class or on game day, we compete down here. We put in work day in and day out to take a step forward towards the Greeks. Championships. Our goals? Excellence on every level. More than 3,200 student athletes. One attitude. We are the Big South, where winners are made. You're more than a dreamer. You're a doer. Determined, driven, inspired. You may not see it now, but at Robert Morris University, we do. Our highly individualized approach will give you the confidence to try, the freedom to fail, and the support to try again. You'll be transformed. You'll be empowered. And you will be unstoppable. Robert Morris University. Unstoppable. We understand an upside down world, but they're writing us off before we get to the starting line. A stalled generation? Who do you think is going to fix all this? We will, because our future is the future. So we're going to build bridges and hospitals in a day and feed those left in the cold. We're going to do all this and more because we have an appointment with destiny. It takes work, determination, and an unstoppable drive to reach your goal. That's what you just did, Pittsburgh. You fought to bring D1 hockey back to this city. Words can't express our gratitude, but our actions will. Every practice, every period, every game, we're going to leave everything on the ice for you. You kept us going, Pittsburgh. And thanks to you, we are unstoppable. Well, the Bison have the football back, and it is first down and 10 following the interception. They put a new quarterback in, Quentin Williams, making a walk along the end line, headed for the locker room, and they bring in Jashan Scroggins, a redshirt freshman quarterback out of Las Vegas to play QB right now for Howard, and he runs the ball on first down and gains six. Well, I hope nothing's wrong with Quentin Williams because he's a major, major part of the Bison offense, no doubt about it. Very impressive quarterback. Second down and four. Scroggins going to hand off, and a big hole and a big run again. Here he comes. Ian Wheeler, he's going to be gone. Wheeler from 60 yards away scores another Bison touchdown, and Howard has increased its lead to 34 to 7 over Robert Morris. Yeah, what a game Ian Wheeler's had, Chris. He has been uh, tough to tackle, especially in the second half. I think the Colonial defenders are a little bit tired, and when you're tired, you start missing tackles, and there's one right there. Should have been a six, seven yard gain, ends up a long touchdown run for Ian Wheeler. I think that'll pretty much do it for the Colonials here today, Chris. Is, uh, they're way too far behind him. Mount this big of a comeback. I believe you're right, Jim. 7.25 to go in the game. Here's the kick. It's on its way. It's end over end. It is tall, and it's good. And West converts again. 35-7 to seven goes the score. The Howard Bison over Robert Morris here this afternoon. A 60-yard run by Ian Wheeler. And the Colonial defense looking gassed right now. Absolutely. They've been on the field most of the second half. 
just cannot stop the running game now. As the, the big boys on the offensive line for Howard have taken over this game. They're controlling it, creating holes, and Wheeler's making people miss. The secondary and linebackers for the Colonials just can't. Br first guy cannot bring him down as he's so quick. You know, the thing is, they have hit on all cylinders today. Yep. Howard, Jim, offense, defense, and special teams. They got a big touchdown kickoff return by Ian Wheeler earlier. But uh, you're right. Yeah. I mean, it's been every facet well, of the game. Well, the first half stats weren't that good for no. uh, Howard or Robert Morris. They were pretty even, and neither had a lot of yardage running, and neither had a lot of passing. But this second half, totally different ball game. This has been total uh, domination by uh, the Howard Bison here in the second half of the Colonials. They're just going to have to regroup after this game for yeah. next week. Really, it started at 535 to go in the second <laughs> period when Wheeler, right. ret uh, Wheeler returned that kickoff 88 yards. Yeah. But you're right, it was a, a seven-point game at halftime, mm -hmm. and Howard has blown it open here in the second half as the Colonials try to return that kick, and they're going to get back to the 21-yard line, and that's it. Ridgely on the return, and with 720 to go, the Robert Morris offense getting set to take the field again, trailing 35-7. to Yeah, the fresh team, you don't see missing tackles. Derek Hartley comes down on a kickoff one-on-one. -on -one. Colonials can't make a miss. He makes the first, the first guy makes the tackle. Chickett and the offense trot back out onto the field right now. Anthony Chickett out of Bethel Park High School. South Hills of Pittsburgh. This is where you see a lot of mistakes, a lot of turnovers. You just try to force things, force the action a little bit here when you're so far behind. Chickett drops back, throws over the middle, and it goes incomplete. He's trying to find James Westry over the middle, and he yeah. was tied up. Uh, he was pretty well tied up, too. <laughs> I, thought, I thought he was being held, actually. Yeah, Adrian Ramsey was hanging on for dear life. <laughs> Freshman from Tampa, Florida. And a referee just stuck that, kept that flag in his pocket. I think the ref's looking at the clock saying, let's get this thing over with. It's, it's almost dinner time. <laughs> you don't think they say that kind of stuff, do you? <laughs> clock stopped with 7.16 to go on the incomplete pass. Chicken's going to call for another snap. Rushes on, steps aside, throws sideways, and it goes incomplete through behind the receiver that time. And that was Becker. Connor Becker, the wide receiver out of Hanover, Pennsylvania, transferred in from Stetson. Redshirt senior. Yeah, Howard doesn't have to blitz anymore. They can rush two, three, four guys if they want. Everybody else play back in the backfield. Keep everything in front of them and uh, just uh, wrap this game up. Anthony will try it again. Third down and ten. From the 21-yard line, 7-10 to go. Check it. Steps up, winds up, throws long downfield. Westry oh. is there, but it's incomplete. Wow. James Westry had blown by just about everybody with the exception of Lance McMillan, and that was oh so close. Yeah, it was close. I thought he was pretty open there. Did, did Kenny Gallup coming across get the hand on the ball? Not sure. Deflection. Let's, Let's see, see if we can see here. I thought... Right, guy coming from the right. No, he put his hand down, actually. That was him there. Just a misfire. Fourth down and 10. Sounders is on to kick. He stands at his own six to field the snap. Sounders sends it downfield. Here, Here comes go. the return, starting yeah. right, cutting back left is Ebron. Ebron still on his feet, 40, 35, down to the 30, and Ebron run out of bounds on the far side at around the 29-yard line. Ebron tackled out of bounds, no flag on the play. 6.49 left in the game. Howard up big, 35-7 over Bobby Moe.
It is time to name our Hercules Tires strong move of the game. That's the Hercules Tire strong move of the game, and I don't think you can get any tougher than this. Yep. Ian Wheeler. Look at him. Shifty guy. Fast. Breaks tackles. He's a real weapon for the Howard Bison. Kept his balance going down that chalk line, too. That's our strong move of the game, brought to you by Hercules Tires, right on our strength. Chris Shublin, Jim Elias on the call here today. 6.49 to go in the football game. It has been all Howard since midway through the second period. 35-7, to the Bison lead on the road. I think uh, Howard just put some uh, second teamers in. I can see some different offensive linemen in there. There's Wheeler. There's a little reverse and the handoff finally in the hands of Ebron. And Ebron trapped Behind the line of scrimmage for a two-yard loss back at the 32-yard line. They popped it to Wheeler. Wheeler reversed it to Abron, and the come around didn't work, and the Colonials had it covered. There is a backup quarterback in the ball game right now as Jayshon Scroggins is in after Quentin Williams, who went almost the entire way. We saw him walking toward the locker room. Now Scroggins on second down and 12. No, that's not Scroggins in there. They bring another guy in. Seven, oh, that seven. is Scroggins. Oh, there's an interception. Mistake. There's a pick. Scroggins did throw the interception as he was in there, and the Colonials will get the interception and return it back upfield. And coming up with the football this time around is Bradley McGee. Yeah, beautiful interception that time. Perhaps a little wobbly. He jumped the uh, route. One of the few big plays the Colonials have had. First turnover for the Howard Bison. Got caught by the shirt tail that time. Otherwise, he might have gone a little further. Yeah, nice play by McGee. First you know, down at 10, Robert Morris. Yeah, you know, the outcome of the game is pretty much over, Chris. So, yeah. But you still, if you're Robert Morris players, you, you've you still got to do your job. you still got to try to press the coaching Robert staff and do your thing. Passing team number 81, 15-yard penalty. First down, Robert Morris. All right, that's on Ebron. Yeah. As I was saying, you, you have to continue to do your job and do what your coaches want. Yep. You, you know, you got to play like it's the beginning of the game and try to pick, you know, just create good habits and improve. You got to improve. Don't look at the scoreboard now. Not at all. After the penalty, the Colonials will have the football at the Howard 47 yard line. Wide slot over to the right side. Now Ridgely goes in motion, left to right, and the handoff will go up the middle for the Colonials. They'll try to run the football. Yep. And carrying the ball is O'Sullivan. You know, people are probably saying, why, why is he running? They're down 35. No, you, he's trying to work on his running game for next week. He's trying to improve it. So I think it's a good move by the coach, Bernard Clark. Second down and eight, swing pass caught by O'Sullivan coming out of the backfield to the right. He steps over the 45 and is tackled at the 44-yard line. So all that, and they pick up a yard. Again, that's part of the running game when you think about yeah, it, those quick tosses. Yeah, short pass, right. Yeah. He's, he's, they've got to, this is like practice now. For the re next five minutes, it's uh, almost practice. Try to uh, execute on the offensive line. Three men left. Another run. They're going to run the football. It's going to be Moyer this time. And D.J. Moyer plowing through the line finally. They knock him down. And that's going to be a first down for Robert Morris. 4.48 to go here in the football game. Honestly, it'd be nice if the Colonels could finish with a touchdown. Really would. You know, lose the game, but just have a tiny bit of momentum to gain a little bit of confidence. Three receivers to the left side. Check it looking downfield over the middle. He throws, and it's incomplete at the 20-yard line. Tried to hit Ridgely, who was cutting over there. And Ridgely was double covered on the play. Check it tried to thread the needle, but couldn't get it to him. No, he did. He tried to thread it, but could, it wasn't. Uh, it was almost complete, but uh, not quite. Second down and 10 coming up for Robert Morris now from the 37. I don't think Chick has been quite as sharp as he has been this year. Just off a tick here and there, and that's all it takes for an incompletion. I think he's been hurried quite a bit today. And oh, no doubt. Obviously played in the No doubt. 
that time he had a lot of time, but still couldn't complete it. Pump fake, steps up, throws downfield. That goes. ball is caught. And the Colonials come up with a big play deep into Howard territory now as they complete it down to the eight-yard line. First down and goal to go. At, uh, Clifton's had two receivers in the same area. They were lucky to complete that one. Run play. The Colonials push it inside the five-yard line, down toward the three. O'Sullivan carrying the football. And he'll be stopped at the three-yard line with 3.51 to go. They're knocking on the door here, Chris. No quit. Colonials keep playing hard. Now timeout is called. One of the Bison hurt on the play. Here's a look at that long pass. Earlier in the Colonials able to move the ball downfield. And O'Sullivan gets them down to the three-yard line where it's going to be second down and goal to go. But again, an injury by one of the Bison and... They'll clear that up, and here comes Robert Morris again on offense. Yeah, it would be nice to score right here. I said the game's over, but you still want to pick up a little momentum coming out of this game. Moyer is in at the running back spot. Off to Anthony Chicken's left shoulder. It's going to be a run to the right. Yeah, quarterback option. Chick it to side to keep it. And he'll be sent down. Well, that wasn't even Chick it. That was a Wildcat run that time. Oh, okay. And Anthony's going to check back into the ball game. I was just thinking, uh, you know, hope you don't get your quarterback hurt here in the end of a game that's pretty much over. And uh, But Wildcat was a nice call there. Check it back in. Gets a snap. Play fake. Looking left. Flushed out of the pocket. He's going to be sacked. Back at the 12-yard line. Anthony goes down. And again, that big defensive front for yeah. Howard comes up huge. That was Noah Miles. 6'5", 290. Great job. He had a, he had a blocker hanging on his back, and he still was able to bring Check it down with one hand. So the Colonials are going to send the special team out. They're going to try to kick for the field goal here. It's going to be Jason Jenkins. He'll have it placed at the 19-yard line. This will be a 29-yard attempt. They're just working on it. That's all they're doing, just working on their field goal attempts. Souders the holder. Jenkins the kicker. It is up. The left foot goes into the ball, and it is good. So tack on three more points for Robert Morris, and with 2.01 left in the fourth period of play, the Colonials are down 35 to 10 to the Howard Bison. You're watching Robert Morris University Football on ESPN+. Plus.
Well, the Colonials put a field goal on the board as we see Anthony Chickett, uh, you know, obviously pondering what's happened here today. And, you know, I know there's a lot to think about after this one is over, but uh, there's a lot of football left to play. Yeah, absolutely. It's a long season. Uh, Anthony Chickett's had a good season so far this year. A little rough spot today. Uh, not his fault. It was just a um, team overall. Uh, I give more credit to Howard. They, they just played a really good football game. Uh, I thought it was a very winnable game for the Clones in the first half, but the second half was totally dominated by uh, Howard. Onside kick, and that ball is loose and live, and it's going to finally be recovered by Robert Jones the third, the defensive back out of Fairwood, Maryland. Colonials actually jumped up after it had gone 10 yards and punched, punched at it, it to yeah. keep it alive. Yeah. Somebody uh, did make a nice play, almost, uh, as you said, kept it alive for somebody, but there was nobody to pounce on it. So we have two minutes left. Howard is up 35 to 10. Yeah, Colonials are going to come in with the backup defense. They don't want to get anybody. Neither team wants to get anybody hurt now, so you've got a lot of backups on the field right now. Sometimes you find a hidden gem. Watch guys play a couple minutes and they say, hey, let's give this guy a chance. Maybe he picks a pass off or makes a nice tackle or something. The run play out to the left were a nine-yard gain this time by Eden James. You know, Howard has done this today, Jim, and we mentioned Casey Hawthorne. We yeah. found out right at kickoff time that he wasn't going to be available yeah. today, and they've done this without him today. Yeah, absolutely. Give him credit. His backup, Nashon Hezekiah, scored their first touchdown of the game on an eight-yard reception from Quentin Williams. Second down and two after a pickup of eight by Howard. We have 122 to go. The clock is running. They got a nice uh, stable running backs also. Colonials blitzing. And the run will go to James once again off of left tackle this time. And that's going to be a first down. Ball sitting at the Robert Morris 46-yard line as we come down to the one-minute mark time remaining in today's game. Yeah, it's time for maybe a play or two. <laughs> you can take a knee here if you want to. Larry Scott, the head coach of the Howard Bison. His team will go to 500. They'll be 2-2 two and two after this one's all said and done. Yeah, he's got to be really pleased with the performance of his uh, team today, both uh, both sides of the ball. He really played well. They're going to run it again. It'll be Eden James off the left side, and James ahead for about a three-yard pickup. Not easy to win in college football on the road. And uh, the Bison came up here and uh, dominated the Colonials here in the second half, and that, that's going to do it. They will not have to take another snap, and we're going to let this thing roll down to zero. Robert Morris falls here at home today as the Colonials go down to Howard by a final score of 35-10. to 10. For Jim Elias and our entire crew here at Robert Morris University, I'm Chris Shublin saying so.